minus 30 seconds. minus 20 seconds. Coolest Reptile Podcast in the world. Welcome to Monday Night's New Breed on the Block with Brandon from Nixon Reptiles. What is good? I'm your boy, MJ. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Hope you're having a freaking amazing Monday. But man, if you're tapped in now, what is good? Uh, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Select all. You'll be on top of every single podcast, every piece of content I drop here at the Trap Talk Reptile Network. I want to say thank you for all the love and support. If you listen to uh, the Trap Talk Reptile Network on all the major audio platforms, such as uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, um, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. I just got to say thank you for uh, anyone out there who listens to this podcast, no matter where you're listening to. Thank you so much, man. Love all the support. Sh shout out to all the early birds. I'll get to you guys in a minute. Shout out to US Arc, first and foremost. Second link in the description below. Click on that if you don't know what US Arc is. Join the team today. Join the fight, okay? This is no joke. You never know what legislation is going to hit your backyard. So thank you to anyone out there who supports U.S. Art. All right? We'll get straight to the point. Support U.S. Art. They are here for us. Shout out to Phil Goss. Shout out to anyone out there who supports U.S. Art. all right? Uh, shout out to anyone out there who's excited for the Reptile Super Show. Number one reptile show in the country. Coming up here shortly in June already. I cannot believe it. The L.A. Uh, Pet Fair. It's going to be nuts. Three buildings in one show. All right, so more information to come. But to be on top of all that, make sure you follow the Reptile Super Show on Instagram. Shout out to Rami. Shout out to the entire Reptile Super Show team and family. And uh, again, I'm looking forward to vending again. It's an awesome time. Uh, tonight's episode is brought to you by Manak Clothing as well. So shout out to Manak Clothing Company. Head over to manakclothingcompany.com. Use promo code TRAPFAM. Get 15% off your entire order. And yes, man, I'm talking about training wear, sports wear, just overall every day, day to day wear so comfortable thank you so much uh for uh sponsoring the trap first ever clothing sponsor company thank you so much it's awesome um also tonight's company is brought to you by the chipper number one cocoa substrate in the game head over to cocoadoo.com and place your order with the chipper all right my preference is the cocoa to go all right because i don't have time really to break all that down even though that's a very easy process but the stuff that comes already broken down in the bag, the big chunks, that's my game. I'm, I'm in love with that stuff, I'm telling you right now. So either way, go check out what he has available. Use promo code TRAPFAM24. You get 24% off the entire order all year, all right? It's, it's hooking it up big time. Go test that product out right now. I'm going to be doing a vlog on my other channel, the Trap Reptile Vlogs, on that substrate and showing you guys a more insight, better look on that. Everything behind me right here in the Focus Cube Habitat rocks that substrate, and I'm a huge fan. Right? You don't even have to change it as much either because it's high quality. So thank you, uh, the homie over at uh, The Chipper, Coco Dude. Links to this uh, these sponsors are in the description below. All right, so make sure you guys click there and check it out. Also, tonight's episode is brought to you by Juggernaut Reptiles. Super diverse, super do it, like next level stuff when it comes to reptile projects in the, in the reptile world. Um, follow Elijah and his wife, Tiffany, at Juggernaut Reptiles on IG and also follow their page on Facebook. They're very active on both, and yeah, shout out to the shout out to the uh, Juggernaut family. Really love these two, and they're they're really just OGs in the game for sure. Of course, you know that's a fact. Um, last but not least, tonight's episode is brought to you by Mark Bailey over at Mark Bailey Reptiles. My dog, the OG, he's actually in town. Shout out to the big dog; he's in town right now. Uh, probably gonna hang out with him after this. But please head over to Mark Bailey Reptiles on Morph Market. Follow his work, all right? Because he doesn't have Instagram, and doing my best, but it is what it is. OG triple OG. Uh, you know, you got those these guys don't have Instagrams. What do you want me to do? You know, she's not the only one either. So, Mark, thank you so much for your love and support. Appreciate you, dog. Looking forward to hanging out with you tonight. And uh, yeah, who's ready? Who's ready for this guy? Big E top G. What's up, what's up? Just just you know, I just bring it in there, bro. I just drop you in there. I don't I don't no heads up. What's up, man? How you doing? How you? I'm parched. I need a sip of coffee. Yeah. Oh, it's hot. What's good, man? How are you? Great, bro. Great. Had a great weekend in Tampa. 
bended. Yeah, bending with the homies. With you Steve. bended next to Steve Morris. Steve, Jeremy, Jeremy Bod, Paul, my boy. So I'm gonna uh, say this. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna say this on the record, Steve. I know you're recovering, but that doesn't mean you can't come on Trap Talk. Come on the show, buddy. We need you back. Could you agree, Emilio? We need he needs to come back. Hell yeah. All right. Just I just want him to know that we want him back. He's coming. Other, he's coming. other people want Steve on this show. You know, it's not just me and you. I'm not. It's not selfish reasons, but Steve Morphs is wanted for that round too. Just saying. Sir. Anyways, um, so Tampa bended overall success, you'd say? Yeah, it was great. All right. All right. Good. When's the next show? Uh, Jacksonville, March 9th and 10th. How far is Jacksonville from you? Uh, five, six hours? I'm not sure. Oh, it could be. It, it's like five. Yeah. Props. Giving it to you, man. You're you're really doing it, dude. You're really bending. You're really yeah, doing Paul, it. Yeah, Paul. I thought it was 25 shows this year. Paul was like, nah, man. It's like 35. Like, Damn. What? Paul's counting? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, man, shout out to Paul. I'm actually finally we're gonna be talking to Paul finally this week. Uh cannot wait to connect yeah. with the homie Paul, man. But listen, this show I'm excited for, especially because as we're getting to the very nitty gritty right now to drop Brandon in. I'm finding out that this dude, Brandon has been around for a while. Like he's no, like in my eyes, because I only know him for ball pythons. I, I don't know the whole side of the boa game that he was in, that he had success with. He's in, he's in the state of Maryland where we, we know some of the best reptile keepers to ever be on this earth live in Maryland Ed Marino, you know, and just to say, that's my favorite guy out of Maryland, but there's more. You know, I'm just saying, Ralph, Ralph Davis is Ralph Davis, which is your favorite guy, you know, and, and Ralph, you know, I'm just saying, Ralph is awesome too, you know. Yeah, Pete's out there. I mean, Pete, yeah, yep. There's, I mean, there's just so many to name, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, Brandon, Brandon's been doing this for a minute, bro. He's got my respect. Yeah, it's super calm. He just seems super humble. I mean, I just, I'm yeah, excited we- to get to know him more and tap in. So I'm excited for tonight, and I know there's people in the live chats that are stoked for tonight. Um, I do want to say, if you're in the live chats tonight, if you think that tonight's show's worth any super chat, um, please don't be shy. Drop those super chats, if, especially if you have a question or just a, a cool topic or anything you just want to add to tonight's episode. Please drop those super chats. Like my boy, safe right here. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Let's go. And like he said, hit that MFing like button. I, I don't know why I'm not cussing, but appreciate you, dog. Ethan Hatchery. Trap Talk Patreon member, V-Unit family, all day, every day. Appreciate you. Krista, my, my girl right here. What's good? Neurofy Exotics, Trap Talk Patreon member, V-Unit family, all day, every day. <laughs> the Wild Type Podcast. What is – should we write this one down? Is this a new one? I haven't heard of, I haven't heard of this one. How, how long have you been around, Wild Type? Let me know. I'm down to check it out. Are you, are, you, are you sick in a good way? That's what I mean. Find out. The Wild Type Podcast. Shout out to them. 1776 Exotics, Big Mike. Trap Talk Patreon member OG, Triple OG in the building. Appreciate you. Magic City Pythons, homie JC, B Unit family all day, every day. Morph Valley Reptiles, Man Fred D. Trap Talk Patreon member, V Unit family all day, every day. Leviathan Snakes. What a name to be, you know, dropping here on the, on the podcast. Power couple right here. Please tap in with these guys. I appreciate it. I mean, it's a couple of them saying, uh, but yes, Leviathan Snakes on IG. Killing it in the game. Shout out to these two. Eric Moore Factory in the building. B Unit family all day, every day. What is good? Matt B in the building. What is good? Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Bosa Reptiles. The homie Aaron in the building. What is up? B Unit family all day, every day. Hyperspace Reptiles. The homie Chad hating Pied every day. That's how he does it. I don't know why, but he hates Pied. V <laughs> uh, <laughs> Unit family all day, every day. Alex M. V Unit family all day, every day. JQ. Big JQ. The big dog right there. Appreciate you so much, JQ. Trap Talk Patreon, or sorry, uh, V Unit family all day, every day. Tough Art Pythons in the building. What's up, Tough Art? Appreciate you so much. Drink X, X, Drink X. Never out. That's sick. So just a homie, man. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. The homie Diego, it's my hitter right here. Uh, where are you, Diego? And we need to talk. <laughs> I got surgery tomorrow. We need to talk, player. Um, so my homie Diego here, Cruz Family Constrictors. Go give him a follow on Instagram. Uh, Trap Talk Patreon member all every day. The homie Lenny, Demonic Reptiles. This guy right here, he does not miss when it comes to the real memes. Hit him up. Demonic Reptiles on IG, and he low-key does breed ball pythons. He don't just clown. Uh, it's my dog. Appreciate you, Lenny. Uh, check out his episode that we just had two not too long ago. Morph Kings, 
The homie Cody, Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. The homegirl, Aurora. Aurora Exotics in the building. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Adrian Exotics. You know the homie Adrian. What's well, good? Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Don't touch me. Meteoric <laughs> Serpents. JD. The young hitter. Colubrid <laughs> Corruption. Please. Subscribe to this man's podcast. And we're going to end it in style because it's really hard to tap or top top the homie JD in the chat right now. This is the youngest, heaviest hitter in the podcast game. So we're going to end it in style with JD tonight. And it's time to bring Brandon on. You ready or what? Let's go. All right, guys. Trap fam, whoever's tapping in, it is that time. Time to get your mind right. Time to stay hydrated because staying hydrated is very important. But episode 459. Brandon from Nixon Reptiles coming at you right now. Get the likes up. Let's go. Cheap. Good. You ready for do do more in the future? Trap yes. talk podcasts? Yes. Man. Only, only trap talk. Exclusive. Yes. Trap Exclusive. Oh. So stop calling us. From the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the crop, gotta love it, love it, and not them. Hop from the hop to the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the everybody. Live episode 459 with Brandon Nixon Reptiles. What is up, Brandon? Not too much. Just hanging out with uh, with you two here. I know I talk to Emilio pretty regularly on uh, through IG and stuff. But yeah, what's up, bro? I'm actually happy that's the case because sometimes Emilio's like, "Who is this person? Uh, what do you know about them?" I'm like, "Dude, I normally bring people on to find out about them, but Emilio wants to know. He wants to know background information and and." I thought I knew about you, Brandon, but boy, did am I wrong because I had a lot of people reach out to me telling me how excited they were as far as, you know, you being somebody that's working with other stuff from what I know you as. Yeah, I know you as a ball python breeder, but you go back further than that from what I know, right? Yeah, quite a bit. I mean, boas for a very long time and then eventually getting into the ball pythons and keeping a bunch of other stuff in between too. Are like I used to, have, I used to have scrub. Like I, I had scrubs. Like I had some southern scrubs for a while, and wow. they just didn't do very well for me. Like I got those from um, from a dude, um, Spitfire Reptiles. He was like back in the day. Like he was, he was producing some really nice uh, scrubs, and you know, just a variety of stuff. Man, I like all the, I like all the different species, which I think is one of the cool things about this um, podcast in general is the variety of keepers that are on here. And the variety of animals and stuff that um, that people have and people keep, so it's pretty cool. I, I just love getting excited. Not that I'm not excited for people to come on the show, but sometimes new breed on the block. I'm like, it's mainly okay. Let's get to know this person. Being new, getting into it, and I'm not saying that's always boring. But when it's from somebody that actually is attached to stuff that you know, we're talking like Ralph Davis stuff, and you know, just mm -hmm. other kind of boa constrictor projects that. You know, can you just, for the record, say how long it's been since you've bred your first boa constrictor? Like, are we talking about as a kid you were doing this or? Pretty much. I mean, my first boas that I produced were with a buddy on like a breeding loan in 2007. So those are the first wow. ones that, that I had made with him. And then I started producing my own in uh, 2010. Okay. So. And, then, and then what, and then what just made you 
want to go ahead and do all ball pythons and not both because you have no more boas left i'm concerned i'm assuming right or you still no I, I no i mean i have some I'm, i worked out a deal to to basically get my collection to another guy that i know um, so i'm going to bring those with me to tinley and then he'll have those and then you know i'm kind of and i'll be out of the boas which is kind of bittersweet because i did i do really enjoy them i did really enjoy them my success was just really spotty with them right and and that really kind of tugs at the heartstrings as far as like everything goes because it's like man you put so much effort into raising these animals up and bringing them up and then you just have bad luck or just bad just bad situations you know it's like i know you know your one girl died like recently you know jessica alba you know i guess yeah which i heard the whole like funny story about that like someone i can't remember who it was but yeah, like, name's Jessica Alba died. like who's that like you know they thought oh like, yeah he thought that celebrity got taken out <laughs> you know yeah but, yeah yeah. he told his wife and his wife's like what and like they yeah. thought yeah so. <laughs> um yeah, no but you're right hard with that stuff man it, it, it takes a toll on you and the last one that took a toll was one of my like fires which is like a het leucistic yeah i bred her like my blood male big old massive ovulation i thought everything was going good and then as it was getting closer to the due date she ended up slugging out and like two weeks later she just up and died and i was like yeah that's it man i'm just out like that's happened too many times and I'm just kind of, I was kind of tired of it. And it's just, it's, it's for the best, you know, someone else can enjoy the boas and they can, you know, do what they want to do with them. I'll stick with the, the berms, the bloods and the balls. So. Gosh, so, man. So for real quick, for people that don't know boas out there that mainly do Paul pythons, that is a completely different world, right? Yeah, for sure. That's one male to one female. And that female goes every other year if you're lucky, right? It's a completely different ball game, and that and that's after raising her up for four or five years. Yeah, it's a slow game. <laughs> like, the bow like game, a... bow game, slow, and then like like Brandon's saying, it could go disaster real quick. Um, and and I remember when I was leading, like I have one bow bow litter under my belt, and this was two years ago. Um, and I remember as I was talking to people I was close to, they were telling me how they just had nightmare experiences with their boas, and they just like my well, my one buddy Joey, who's kind of getting out now told me that he had boas breeding and he just had the worst luck like females just rolling out of nowhere and it's just like oh my god like what the fuck and you know with you know that's why i always love my ball pythons because i don't go through any of that shit with my ball pythons like yeah i haven't either like, ball I, had, pythons. I had one female i think passed away so randomly a ball python wise but i'm talking like one out of seven years and, and it was a really yeah. weird, random thing that i don't even know what happened. i got a nido tested everything and it was fine it was don't know why i died who really knows but um but with the boas, like, you know, you wait five, at least five years. Um, and, but man, you got to admit though, seeing those litters is something else. It's, it's one of the coolest things ever for sure. Oh that, yeah, it totally is. I mean, seeing them all in their little egg sacks and stuff and they literally will like yeah, be in your like hand that. and haven't even taken like a breath yet. Cause they're still like in their sack. Like Super it's really, great. it's really rewarding. And there's, you know, some really pretty animals and yeah, and I, I really did enjoy them. I just wish I would have had better success with them you know and yeah, yeah. That's, do, do you think do you think if you didn't go because you were pretty much all in right so how many bows did you have at one point i don't know i mean i i kept it like more so like small but it's like i had like a pretty good amount i sold off a like when i was like going through school for my current like job i sold off a lot of the stuff that i had produced that was really high quality or traded for stuff that was really high quality but just to like I don't know, just to kind of get by through school and everything else. It's like, I sold most of those things and I just kept like a couple like cool projects and, you know, it just, yeah, it just never, I don't know. It's, it's, it's different because I, I feel like I'd never been able to gain that same ground in the boas as I have with like the ball pythons, as far as like making the holdbacks, keeping the holdbacks, you know, helping to build up the infrastructure as far as like the caging and the rodents and like all that other stuff. And I feel like that's like a big opportunity that the ball pythons have allowed me that I feel like I never really got with the boas. The ball pythons is the one game where once, you know, if this is your third, fourth year doing it and, and you, you're you successful, you put your hands in the air. And it's like almost automatic. It's like you just, you know, it, it's very systematic breeding ball pythons. Yeah. And, and and if you stick to it and you don't fuck with it, you're going to have success, you know, all the, all the time. And it's like you said, you're gonna have holdbacks. You're gonna, you are gonna get luck on some, on some, if not a lot, a lot of clutches. 
and you're gonna it's just fun to hold stuff back it really is um right. now i, I want to actually kind of leeway into ball pythons because you know obviously there's something that motivated you and pulled you into the ball python game and and what year was this let's kind of talk about what motivated you to get into ball pythons and what year this was uh, well 2018 i decided i was going to start picking up some like ball pythons okay um my first one like i had ball pythons like years years and years before like my first ball pythons that i bought were in i think it was like in i don't know 2002 or 2001 or something like that and i got like a pet pair of head albinos for like 12 1500 bucks something like that hmm. from a dude out in one of the san diego shows but getting into them as far as like the breeding and stuff is concerned was 2018 you know 2019 is when i made my first purchase you know your favorite morph the sunset from brock <laughs> Don't go there, Brandon. Don't. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Um, so t- that's okay because that's why, in my eyes, I don't. I didn't. You know, because you, it's like you, you almost rebranded yourself. I want to say because you, when I started paying attention to your your channel your, or your account, it was just mainly you showing off what you're investing ball python wise, and I just didn't see a lot of the boas. Um, and it was and that was strategic, right? Like you did that on purpose. I mean, part of it is. I mean, like. The, the boas are just different as far as like holding them and interacting with them and cooperation for like doing like reels and videos and like photos yeah. and all that other stuff. They're just a real pain in the ass. Yeah. Oh, and it, yeah. it makes it, you know, difficult to like get the kind of like quality of stuff that I want to get with the boas. So the ball pythons just made it a lot easier. And overall, I feel like the, the ball python people, were very like receptive to seeing like the the pictures and the videos and they wanted to like basically kind of support or push forward like some of these projects and and different things so it's like almost like the reward right for like putting that time effort and energy into it there were you know people that would begin to follow or like the videos or comment on the videos so it was very easy to continue showing those at the time I will say you have an eye for like, you know, what do they say? Like when it comes to taking good camera shots, like you have an eye for the like camera or something, but detail. you, you, you t- yeah, de- you take really good pictures, bro. Like, yeah. and I think, I think that just having this, like having this under your red, like under your belt, just separate you from so many other ev- reptile people in general. Cause for the most part, people don't know how to take a fucking picture. Even me included. Probably. I'm not even saying I'm a good picture taking, but it is refreshing when I go to a, someone's page like yours and just see that you know how to take fucking shots. It's actually, it's really, it's really awesome. And do you, did you get better with time or do you, you just know how to fucking work a camera? I mean, both. I mean, it was something that I picked up when I was uh, like one of my buddies that I talked to um, whenever I was basically photographing all the boas and stuff that I had. Like that's how him and I had basically began, began like our friendship was basically through like photography and through the boas. And then, um, you know, through that, we, you know, basically he started giving me tips and tricks on taking better photos, like how to actually like manually control the camera and all that. And then, I basically just use that same information and do that towards like video. So, yeah, I got to say, um, I have it here written in my notes. Uh, you got some of the best detailed reels, uh, camera shots uh, in the game. Yep. Uh, you take your time. Uh, you have great content and I beautiful animals. I'll tell you. And I, I don't know how you did it, but you made, you made this fucking brown piece of shit look pretty good on camera, right? <laughs> Well, it's a baby, what right? The they always look good when they're babies, right? No, okay, no, okay, listen. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cool... Listen, I've seen Damn. my first Damn. sunset. Woo. Listen, let me finish. It was a joke. My first sunset I saw was about this size, and it was beautiful, but it doesn't stay like this is my only thing. I wish it stayed like this. This Not, not all of them do, but, I mean, my, like, male, he's, like... Well, I have two, like, breeding male sunsets, and my like original male that produced that he looks pretty he looks pretty good still and he's like two thousand grams he's a friggin' big bastard yeah and, and i don't know okay now sunset, it's definitely a case-by-case basis because i've seen some really ugly ones like there's, there's yeah, no doubt about that here's where i lose the argument no matter what like somebody will just it, it's a foundation to so many greatest greater things that we're about to see in this world I, that's I why emilio I, something earlier i don't know if he shared it with you or not no he didn't why maybe why aren't you sharing things that are shared to you that are supposed to be shared to me what's going on well no i i actually told you in the chat just to, to send it to him bro 
Uh, uh, he, 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 yeah. No, I told yeah. Brandon to send it to you. So, um, so if, you, if you go on the Morph Market, you can look up the Ultramel Sunset in Europe, and you can see a picture of the breeding male. Adult. Adult. And that shit is like... Incredible. It's going to have you changing your tune. <laughs> that's all I'm... That's, I mean... I'm thinking, you know, I'm, 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 I'm manifesting it, so we, but, so, but Ultramel is one of my favorite genes. So that's pretty easy too. Okay. And now, I mean, but the biggest thing that pulled you in was sunset or was it Ultramel? Like let's, what were the recessives that made you kind of fucking zo- zone in and what's going on with all your project right now? Just I mean, kind of- what, so the first, I mean, the first, like I said, the first big purchase that I made in the ball pythons was sunset stuff because it reminded me of blood pythons right right like Same, so I, yeah. I remember like your first like your boa litter that you had it was for like double head blood sharps right you know so it's like so you know it's the blood is kind of a sunset you know of the ball pythons more or less like that's just the the kind of color palette you know so it's like you use that for a base and you can create a bunch of different really cool things 100 percent. and and you know likewise in boas i really liked uh, caramel albinos like vpis and same right. thing, even even like the Central American T positives are really pretty. So it was really easy for me to be interested in um, Ultra Mel Monarch, like that kind of stuff. Um, same thing with like the the Caramel Burmese, like they're just phenomenal color palette, like that T positive albino look. That's, that's one of my favorite uh, in Burmese, for sure. Yeah. I, I, had, I, had, yeah. I had a real good friend in elementary school whose dad used to, he was a painter. He did like oil painting in his garage. Really, he was really good, right? But I remember like the stuff he would like put the painting on and mix. And like a lot of colors, if you looked at it, looked ugly. Like kind of like a lot of the different variations of what he was using was so many different colors. But then you would see some colors just look like it didn't look it didn't look too great. And I just think like ball pythons, right? Is like almost like that artist fucking painting board where you could just almost do whatever the fuck you want. And sunset on that board just happens to be the brown spot. That's all that is, you know. But but you but you use it to step on it to to move on to the next level, which the next levels get crazy with sunset. It really does. I've seen it. I know it. I already know that. Yeah, I, you know, I'm gonna be eating my words here real shortly, and it's all good. I'm I I wanted this to happen. I'm I'm happy for sunset. I want sunset to to fucking go to the top. I but it won't go to the top. Here's the thing. <laughs> See, I think there's I think there's a large amount of people that would disagree with that. It's in the conversation. But- it will be. Wait, 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 wait. Disagree that it will go to the top or that they won't it won't go to the top. Which one are yeah, we are... They will disagree with your comment saying it's not going to be like a top oh, player. Got you. Yeah, like, I don't think it'll be a top player. No. Well, here's what I have to say about that. Um, I feel that it is in the conversation right now. It's not top player. It's got it. It's got it. It's got it. Not it's not top, top player. Top tier. But it's in that top five tier. I would say, for, yeah, right I would now. say type top five percent. Yeah, I would say top five ish. But it, yeah, I mean, hey, that. But that that's, that's what we're talking top. about right now. I mean, you know, yeah, it's there. Yeah, I mean, there's just vast amounts of potential for it. And at the end of the day, like if you compare like the base form of a lot of mutations, they all like don't age as gracefully as we would like. But you put a bunch of time, effort, and energy into those things. And you're going to get some quality stuff. You know, it's like Ed Marino, you know, those, those basins and stuff that he's making, those snowflake basins, like no. he's putting like decades worth of work into like creating that like literal masterpiece of like an emerald tree boa. You know, it's, it's, it's the same thing with like the, with, with the like sunset project, like doing like line breeding, selective breeding. I mean, not all you know are created the same same thing if you're looking at like ghis or you know like pretty much like any like super form of stuff blackheads or chocolates like there's but definitely dude, something like, to be I said think, about good lines i think ghi no disrespect ages and looks better than most adult well, sunsets well ghi and sunset are fairly similar they both have a very unique pattern right but a ghi ages better i feel like in my opinion well it's it's a black snake it's a dark snake Right. Dark snakes age better than almost all of them. Like, yeah. I th- but not I th- <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to your 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 basin comment. I will give MJ this with sunset. You have to 
work a little harder. For sure, no. And, I, and, I'm and, and, no, and, and he's right. Imagine I'll, 20 years from now. I, I Honestly, 20 years from now, I'll probably delete a lot of these podcasts. Brandon, <laughs> Brandon, you know I'm in the project. I'm in the Sunset Gang. I am. Oh, no, yeah, I've seen your but, stuff, yeah. But I will say that there are challenges. If, if you go the wrong way, you're in trouble. And I see people no. going the wrong way already. You got to go the right way, you know? And and the right way is up to opinion. It's it's opinion, right? But yeah, some, um, sometimes you got to try, right? It's like you yeah, don't know until you I'm, put I'm, stuff together yeah. and I'm hope for the best, something really. something where it could be, like we talked about, it's either going to be a horror show or it's going to be amazing. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He, so, he's just waiting until you hatch it so he can dog on yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will laugh if this year I reveal a sunset clutch and fucking just fool all you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, what, that's what he's doing. He's spreading misinformation so he can get them cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. No, they're not going to be, that be cheap. evil. I'm not that you evil. know, <laughs> hey guys, there aren't a lot of sunsets out there. If you go on Morph Market, there aren't a lot of sunsets out there. So it's, well, I would it's, assume they get scooped up really quick. Like even if they are out there, they're gone. It's gonna keep its value. It's gonna do amazing. So, yeah. yep, and, and that can kind of speak numbers on what we're talking about here. If the fact that you can't find too many sunsets just should kind of tell you out there that you know, like Leviathan did say, you know, they, they think it's the number one selling project right now out there, or they know it's the number one selling project. I don't did know. Did you about find that. that adult uh, ultra mile sunset? No, I didn't. Um, it, I just found a bunch of double heads. Do I have to type in Europe or something? So no, so no. So if you, I mean, if you if you find yeah, go go yeah. If you in Europe, just put in all regions, and then all just you regions. know look look for the yeah look for the double like and and the ultramel sunset will pop up and it's a baby, but if you click that, you can scroll down and look at the parents and it'll have a picture of like the adult male, like breeding male, and they have some pictures on their Instagram too. So um, I just don't know how far back those are. But. Is that is that is I'm assuming that's the male that was like first revealed, like when the mm -hmm. first ultra male sunset came out. Yeah. And then and then but then they posted a recent picture of it, not recent, but an, a more updated picture of it. And it, it definitely didn't look like what it looked like as a baby. So are you saying are you trying to tell me it still looks like as good as it was as, as a baby? I think it looks awesome. It like looks, I feel yeah. like you have you have more contrast like you're able to see the differences between like the oh, saddles and, and the and the base body pattern like you can see like that it's i feel like it's aged really nice and i think the the sunset ultramel is like an amazing like like a solid base just like dg clown is like the base for clowns right now a sunset ultramel is an amazing base a sunset monarch is also going to be an amazing base so I mean, there's so many amazing things out there. We could just keep going, but how big oh, is your, not the truth. how big is your collection, Brandon? Like, how many ball pythons do you have? Like, what's going on with your amount of clutches you're trying to hit this year? Um, so I hit 18 clutches and 21. I hit like 18 or 19 and 22, or 23 rather. So 22 and then 23, and then I mean, I'm not sure what I'm gonna base. I'm not sure where I'm gonna be at this year. Um, I have like three fifty five forties and a seventy thirty. So it's like a hundred and fifty or so like adult sub adults. And I'll still probably try and stay under like fifty clutches a year. Like even whenever I get to like a point where I have an option to do more because I'd rather produce a smaller number of animals with higher quality of production. That was kind of my goal. So to just have ability to like do different things kind of deal. Twenty twenty one you had eighteen clutches? Yeah. And so 2018 is when you started kind of picking things up and whatnot, right? So Yeah, so I, I waited longer than I probably needed to to raise everything up because I'm used to boas and taking, you know, four or five years. But, right. Uh, now, I, and I have to ask you, bro. I mean, you've been around, so I'm sure you know that there's ways of getting things to size if you know what the hell you're doing, how you feed it, right? So yeah. how, how are you feeding your holdbacks? And obviously you're, I really want to focus on your males right now, because obviously if you have a, a huge, important, powerful male, you know, you want to get this guy that's your star player, right? So what is it that you do to ensure that, you know, your holdback males are getting to size as quick and safe as possible to size? Honestly, I'm not really worried about getting them to size the quickest. Like, I think at the end of the day, it's like patience, you know, right. and I'm not saying you have to drag everything out, but 
you know, like if a male doesn't breed like the same year he's born, it's fine. You can breed him the next year. Like it's not that big of a deal. Right. You know, it's like, and you know, you're going to have better, your females are going to get more maturity and more age and size on them. So they'll be more mature anyway. So overall, you know, it just kind of is what it is. I do have some uh, blackhead head sunsets that I do plan on like really feeding up this year. Um, but right now for like the first couple of months, I just feed them like every single week. Once they get to a decent size, I'll probably start doing like a Wednesday and Sunday, like small items kind of deal. Um, and that usually packs a little bit of extra size onto them and, you know, kind of hope for the best there. But, you know, I think patience kind of, you know, wins as far as like for longevity in both your animals and, you know, just overall like safety of like your males and females that you're using. Yeah. And you, like you said, you're coming from the boas. So it's like pff, patience. You're definitely, you got that for sure. When it comes to so, the ball pythons. Yeah. So here's the difference. Like my, my male sunset that I got from Brock, like I produced 13, like 13 of my 18 clutches were produced by him that first year. Right. Like he wow. is a champ, you know, it's like, I, you know, he, he did really well. He bred quite literally from like November, December, all the way until like S September or so of, of that year, you know, and he only went off food. He only missed like two or three meals. And I think those times he was in shed. So it just, you know, he, he did really well and he was solid. I mean, he was like a 1500 gram, 2000 gram male. I mean, he's, he's a big bastard. That's a you know? beast male. I'll tell you that. Yeah. He's, he's a good size boy, but you know, he, he does really well and he never misses a meal. So. All right. I don't want to be a party pooper guys, but can we talk about this? Because I'm not trying to say this thing is fully filtered or there's any kind of edits, but I don't know, man, come on. Like it, that looks very bright to me. Like, like that's what an ultra male looks like okay i mean i can pull I mean, out an ultra male that's just as vibrant but you have like the deeper contrast and you also have I mean, like a the pattern that sunset brings to the table i see pattern which which all i care about in sunset is i want to see pattern show me let me see the pattern and we're good we'll be in a good place so i and, and if you go to pattern. their instagram you can see pictures of that animal breeding and he actually looks better than that Okay, so maybe that's what it is. Maybe it is the shot. Maybe this the shot's not giving it justice because there's too much lighting on it. Pro but awesome. I mean, that's that still looks good though. I mean, you have like yeah, bright I mean, gold, bright uh, golden sides. You have like a a deep, like you know, kind of rusty. You know, it's also it's also only three color. years old though. I mean, I mean, that's a pretty bad. good. Yeah. You know, at three, you should be pretty pretty good with with like color. It's not going to change much at that yeah. point. I don't think. No. Now, okay, now, so, okay, clown, clown would would do do what to this in your opinion? I am not really a fan of clown sunsets. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was, I don't mean either at all. Like I have, like <laughs> I have a, I have a banana double hat sunset clown that I made that's possibly hat pied, which I'm not quite sure how I feel about that either. But I do have some plans to to make that work the way that I think it would work the best. I I for one, I'm not pursuing. Uh, a sunset clown. But once I see, All right, Elijah, no more blood pythons. From hey, I, I did not. Hey, by the way, I did not pay Elijah <laughs> to say this or anything. He this shout to the sponsor. He did this solely on his on his own. So shout to Elijah, the OG in the game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I'm yeah. not pursuing sunset clown. But once I see updated pictures of the spot nose <clears throat> version of the sunset clown. I will reevaluate because that snake as a baby was in fucking incredible to me. So and seeing like the ultra versions, the monarch versions, like all those like color versions, I think are going to be a better version of the sunset clown. But like, I will tell you what I like better in sunset that I've seen. And it's not even an, it's not even a recessive that is in, in the mix with it. It's that one, Justin, I always talk about the one Justin posted last year, the one with Cypress and yellow belly in it. I, I thought that thing was nuts. Yeah. Right. Cy There's Cypress and spot nose. Both of those look yes. like amazing yeah. in sunset. Like they look wow. real nice. Dude. They look real, real nice. I know people like, I know like people like Justin are supposed to be like only focusing on like continuing forward, but Dude, I think a lot of people who just come in this need to just focus on what hasn't even been tapped in yet with certain incomplete dominance and certain recessives. You know what I mean? Like, you don't just have to focus on less triple. is more. 
Yeah, I mean, less is more totally, but there, you know, you know, damn well, Brandon, there's this incomplete dominance that aren't worth to be slept on with in, when it comes to certain projects. Like you need them. That's yeah. that's my focus personally. I'm I'm I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm I have shots at Ultra Mile Sunsets this year. But I mean, overall though, I'm far more excited about super forms of things yes. mixed with other genes than I am That's what I'm talking about. trying to pursue like triple and quad recessives personally. Because I mean, first and foremost, it's it's like it, you're just kind of getting ahead of yourself, I feel like. Like why 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 not see what the supers could do what we're working with first? You know what I mean? And, and like I said, God bless all the people who are on that level where they're just focusing on that. Because, you know, we need people to focus on the stuff that we know not to work with in the future, you know? That's the one thing yeah. I'm happy about seeing everyone who's shooting for the moon. All right, well, thanks for giving me these examples of me to work with. But in the meantime, I'm going to kick it with my super gravel, super asphalt pavement fucking double, triple head shit that I have going on. And I'm just going to have fun. You know what I mean? And that's because these are really cool snakes to look at first and foremost. You want to talk about oh, hatching stuff that looks awesome. Hatch a fucking super beat. gravel. You know what yeah. I mean? It's awesome. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's awesome. That, that kind of speaks volumes as far as perspective in the ball Python game, because I mean, how do you feel, Brandon? Let's kind of get to the whole big part of what I like to talk about. Anyone who's in ball Python game is how they are doing in the current market situation, right? Because even if you have snakes for sale, you know, at, at, no matter what you're selling, there might be something that someone else is selling and they might be selling it for fucking nothing. So I want to know how you're feeling about what you're posting for availability. Are you, holding back on some things and just waiting what's going on with how you're playing the market right now as a seller and as a buyer i want to hear it both ends pause so I've, I've, i mean i i haven't stopped buying things because there's always stuff out there that is um you know is is really nice um and that you can use for like stepping like stepping up like within your collection and within like your overall like progress um as far as like sales and stuff all of the nice and I, and I use that term like, you know, because I don't, I don't want to use it like poorly, but it's like all the nice stuff I've produced has sold very easily, right? Um, the only exception to that is some Ultramel Pides that I have, like they have not sold um, for what I anticipated them to sell. But we're, you know, we're going to have a spot at Tinley with a buddy. So it's like, you know, there's a good shot that they'll move there. Nice. Um, a lot of the other stuff that I've produced this year that hasn't really done well is pet level type stuff. And that's mostly because I'm not out there, you know, grinding like 35 shows like this guy over here. You know, it's <laughs> I haven't had the best experience with the shows. Um, and it's just the local shows. It's far too oversaturated with shows out here. Yeah. So you'll have like two shows going on on like the same weekend. And it's it's a whole thing. But it's like so I did have a lot of pet level type stuff this year that didn't move very well and has not moved very well but all of the the sunsets that i produced the tri stripes i produced the clown pods that i produced like all that stuff is gone very quickly um after i posted it up more or less mm. um you know so so that part of it's great that the pet stuff is moving slower than i expected and i think um pretty much like next year and, and the year after so basically within the next two years I feel like my production is going to be considerably better just because the holdbacks that I've raised up to seed my collection, I think are going to kind of speak volumes for that. I'm I, curious. I Go ahead, Leo. The uh, Ultramel Pides are incredible. I love them. They're very nice. I saw them on oh, the uh, Yeah, they're, they're phenomenal. The Tri-Stripe Exantic is dope. We were talking about it on in the V-Unit chat. Uh, Brock loves Tri-Stripe, and he, he was, like, raving about it, so. Well, all three of those double hat pairs all, like, went, like, after I did the auction for the one, I had two people hit me up afterwards, like, wanting the other pairs that I had, so yeah. they all went, like, real quick. And, and Tri-Stripe, I really like. I had to dwindle down on several projects just because I, I really, really want to focus on the Ultramel stuff, and I really want to focus on the pattern mutations into uh, Sunset, so. I had, I just had to, I have too many projects, too many recessives, too many genes. It's you know, it's a lot to try and manage and figure out. I do I do want to say this: if it is something with Sunset that just knocks it out of the park, I hope it's with something I really love. And not that I'm not an Ultramel fan, respect to Ultramel, but I like fucking Monarch. Like I'm a huge Monarch fan just because I've seen things that are coming out with Monarch that are proving its point that darkness will win. Like I, I'm a I'm a darkness guy. Do you know, I like the contract? 
yeah, so I'm just seeing a lot of potential with that, obviously, because it's a little, it's obviously way behind Ultra Mill, but you know, fuck, we, I mean, who's who's the closest to making a Monarch Sunset out there? I'm just curious. That's I don't know. I, I tried to make double heads last year, but my female didn't go. So I'll try again this year to make some double heads and some triple heads and stuff for some Sunset Monarch projects. That, <laughs> that's in my plan for this year. Before I forget, I want to I want your guys' uh, thoughts on this uh, open 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 table on this one because I'm curious on how you guys look at someone who's been in the high end ball python game, right? Like they they put themselves in that category based off what they're producing and what they're investing in, but now you see that a lot of their high end stuff they're putting on auctions. And um, how do you look at that? Like if you see high end stuff on an auction, do you feel like that that person who's selling it is just maybe worried or like they're just getting, you know, what, what do you, what, just, what, what do you think when you see of a high end animal on an auction, Brandon? For me, I, I mean, it can be an opportunity for one. It, it can also kind of help reflect the actual value of something. There's plenty of stuff that was overpriced, you know, in recent times, there's plenty of stuff that yep. is likely still overpriced. There's a lot of hype and a lot of other factors that, can play into the value of something facts and and sometimes that can be for good or bad you know like you know like if if something you know there there's definitely several projects that i'm just not about and i'm not trying to you know throw shade at those things because you know people like throwing rocks at sunset so it's like i'm not trying to like piss on anybody else's you know in their bowl of cereal or nothing but you know yeah. it's like at, at the end of the day, it's like something is worth what someone's willing to pay for it. Right. And it's like, and especially if you're in a situation where it's an animal that you have either multiple of, or if you have, you know, no need for it, like, what would you rather do? Would you rather keep that animal and then it's going to continue to depreciate in value? Or would you try and get whatever's out there? And depending on oh, my phone did its weird thing. You're good. Hold on. I got a twist. Then I got a twist again for some reason. It hates me. That's all good. You're good. Um, but if, um, you know, if someone has a good following, they could share that on their social media. They can do all those different things. And then that could basically get, you know, more eyes on that animal and then bring people in. You know, it's the, I don't know, I guess it, it, it's a very limited window of time where you have people to potentially purchase or bid on that animal. But if someone doesn't like the price of something, they could always bid on it, too. Yeah. You know, uh, if they think uh, it's going too cheap, they could throw more money at it and then they got to raise it and they can use it for their program. So what I would say is that it depends on a lot of different things. Right. But uh, for the most part, uh, for some people, it's the auctions have brought eyes to their animals. Um, you yeah. know, they they might not. You know, there's 40,000 ball pythons on on Morph Market. Right. So yeah. someone with a with a, a lesser following, let's say has a chance to be to, to get their animals seen. But to what MJ's saying, uh, it depends on the breeder situation, right? Um, we've been talking this week a little bit about it. And uh, I mean, the animals that we were referring to, they sold, they sold for good money. I mean, but I think that that the animals we spoke of, uh, that is, they sold for what they're worth. And, yeah, and I feel I, like there's three animals y'all are talking about. <laughs> I, well, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't want to get into specifics, but what I would say is, uh, you know, the breeder situation, who they're competing with, um, the animals, I think, sold for, for what they're worth. And the guy got his sales. Good, good job, you know? And someone got an animal that they're going to be able to enjoy and use in their projects, too. You know, so it's like, you know, if, if both parties are happy, then it kind of is what it is. And, yeah. and, one, more, and one more thing I, I want to say, everyone is getting a, re a reality check. Everyone that doesn't have a lot of experience in this game is getting a reality check. Oh, for sure. It's everyone. I mean, um, that's that's just what we're going through right now. Yep. I mean, and this reality check just affects people differently. Like some people are just like, whoa, you know, like they're okay. And then some people are just fucking wanting to just to jump off a cliff and, you know, 
he doesn't need to be all that. You know, it just depends where you're at situational wise. Like if you're desperately in a time where you're like selling stuff to pay for stuff, God, God bless you. I, I wish you the best because that is a lot of pressure and things just don't sell like that. I'm sorry, but when you really need to sell something, that's when the things don't sell. It's I'm, I, I'm, I'm, crazy, truth, yeah. but I'm telling you, like when you really are like, you know, something happens to your house or some shit and you're looking around like, and you know, you got babies for sale. Like for me, if I really need money right away, I have to unfortunately have to let go of something that's like ready to breed. And I'm like, and I don't even want to think of that. Like, but like, that's, yeah. you know, like it babies and shit. Like, you know, you, even if I do 80% off, it's probably not going to sell still. Like it's not the price with ball pythons. It's that everyone is shopping around. And even if they see the cheapest price, they're going to wait a week to buy that snake. I'm telling you, it's, there are no rush. No one's in a rush to buy shit right now, you know? And that's why a lot of people are losing it right now, just so you know. But it's the buyer's market. Yep. Bottom so, line. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's like, hey, if you're in a place where you're don't give a fuck if you sell anything or not, and you're and you're in a place where you could buy, dude, you're gonna do great right now because you could wheel and deal. You could you could even see who's on morph market, investigate what they have, and hit them up personally and make a fucking huge cool deal with that person. You don't, you know, if you want to, I, of course. I'm just saying there's right now is the time to buy shit for sure. So yeah, there, there's a lot of good options out there. That's for sure. Now I want to go back to a little bit, uh, as far as your, your, your feeding regiments with your adults now, like, you know, me and Emilio, I've talked at some point about some breeders. The reason why they have success with like 12, 13, 14, eight clutches is because their fucking females are gigantic. Like they're big girls, you know, um, what's your thought behind like getting a ball Python to like 4,000, whatever grams or, or, you know, how do you like to feed an adult? female breeding ball python that's well mature let's get into that um i mean for mine i know emilio doesn't agree with it but it's like i, I do asfs for all my adults and stuff and i like them for you know just weird personal reasons and that's what kept me from ball pythons for so long is i like rats rats are cute they're friendly they're like little tiny dogs me too. and i can't and i can't sacrifice a little live rat to uh <laughs> you know to the snakes so I feel yeah, like I feel like they know they just know too much. Like I feel like they know they just can't talk to us. But I feel like rats are super smart. I feel no, like they're. Have you seen the videos where people train their rats to do like yeah. goddamn American Ninja obstacle courses? Basically, <laughs> like it's wild. You know, like I don't understand it. Like I mean, like I have like I've had. I mean, I've had several pet rats. I mean, we had you know one that you know passed away. Like what was it like? two years ago now so i haven't had a pet rat in like over two years now but yeah. i mean I've, I've always had pet rats they're just they're awesome they're cool. and um <laughs> you know that's what kept me from doing the ball pythons for so long but when i first got my stuff in 2018 2019 i was feeding them all frozen thawed like regular rats mm. and then i moved out here and then i you know found out about the asfs and then i started you know getting those for everybody and you know I, and i did great with the frozen thawed rats i mean i never had problems with them eating or anything like that it was just, um, you know, very time consuming to like thaw out that amount of rodents and do the little dance for the ball pythons. But yeah, you know, so I, I, I feed just one adult ASF weekly to all of my adults. And if someone misses for whatever reason, you know, I'll put it in with somebody else and then they'll get a double feeding. And that's pretty much the extent of it. Um, every, every once in a while, I'll offer frozen thawed rats to some of the bigger girls and most of the time they'll still take them. So Man, well, they just have good feeding responses. I wanted to really quickly reiterate and say this again. I am not against ASFs. I know. <laughs> I, I there's, a, there's a conspiracy. He's I not. He's not. He's not against ASFs. He's against pastels. Uh, <laughs> I have ASFs. I feed some ASFs. I feed some mice. I feed mainly rats. <laughs> uh, what I will say to you guys is that if you go to Rodent Pro and you look at the chart. The only hey, hey, thing, hey, don't be they're not don't, don't be dropping names like that, bro. They they're not. We don't come on now. Well, I mean, there's a chart out there. Okay, <laughs> I wish it had ASFs on it because I'm dying to see the energy per kilogram. Or you know, I, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. The only animal on that list that's that is king is the quail. <laughs> okay, six point nine two, six point nine two for a quail, six point six six for a mouse. And I believe it was six point. It was either six point five six for the mouse or six point six six for the rat. Yeah, guys, the other rodents not going to be that different. Quail is king. If you want to talk about 
what's leanest and what's what best. is best to feed the animals. Right. So, so again, my reason is I don't want to feed cute little rats. Right. Like, that's it. I got you, bro. And, and, so, so that, so that's the main. That's valid. That's the, that's the gist of feed my whatever you want out my there. Reasoning. Feed whatever you want out there. I'm just against the the whole thing where this is the best. You know, I feed all that stuff. That's, that's well, so, have, what, have you have you what, fed quails to stuff though? Because I will no. tell you, some snakes eating some poultry is not something you want to be on the back end of. It smells, yeah, it's, and it's oh, dirty. it is. It, it's like it a is. Oh, job. Yeah. I fed, I fed it's, my swine golden's a couple quail recently, and well, you're you, you're gonna find out eventually. Yeah, dude, I I did. <laughs> dude, it I, is something fierce. I don't know if anyone saw the story I did last week, but like Mac Dre, my lace monitor, basically just fucking diarrhea all over his platform and they're, they're like oily i think like the birds well, yeah no no but what happened something. was with, with the basking it gets hard right away you know what i mean so that 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 all that shit becomes something i have to scrape so i was bitching about on my story how like alice never does this shit and what's crazy is lately alice has been on a strict like she's only been wanting quell and for whatever reason she held on to a shit for like four days you should have saw what i had to clean up bro it was so bad it was 10 times worse than mac dre's bro and i gotta tell you the quail shit they hit different they i mean some come some will go complete but just be ready like brandon said there is a huge consequence with quail shits and it's fucking disgusting i will yeah, say they're that. all mostly watery right no it's not why it, 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 it waters mick it is in there it's it is it is a little war watery here's the thing dude my chondros when they eat quails they should they shit a perfect shit they have like a solid shit but the python, like the bigger python species, dude, it's diarrhea time for sure. It's not, it's not, not there's nothing solid coming out of that fucking sink. And sometimes they don't digest the fucking uh the wings. Like the, they'll shit out the wings with the with the bones and shit on it sometimes. Well, so I want to say I'm not advocating anyone to 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 switch to quail or anything for python. Like, All right. I'm saying is that the chart that I saw had quail as king, six point nine two. Right. But 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 what are we talking here? We're talking ball pythons that are meant to <laughs> breed, right? So of course, some of this stuff would be king in a sense. So what is going to give you the best clutches? I know just like anything else, if you feed it something smaller, it's probably not going to give you bigger clutches. We were just talking about that in the chondro game. Chondros that breed at 600 grams, females, they only give like eight, nine, ten eggs, you know, at the most 16 sometimes. I had someone who just said someone dropped a 20 egg clutch, but it's not common for a small chondro to do that. They do smaller clutches. Now, b that are 1,200 grams, 1,500 grams, dude, they drop 20, 30 fucking egg clutches. Well, so, well, go ahead. Let me and Brandon, I'll let you go right after. Uh, but in my experience, your female size doesn't always mean big clutches. bigger clutches. It could mean huge eggs, you know, big ass yeah. babies. Big um, that's I see eggs. that a lot as well. So Bob Bob Vu just had a fourteen egg clutch. I'm, I should have asked him how big that snake was. I guarantee that. Yeah, snake was. I've had I've had thirteen and fourteen um, egg egg uh, clutches. Uh, the girls are about four forty five hundred grams. Yeah, my biggest is thirteen. See, my like, like I have um, a, a pinstripe pet sunset female. She's an, an awesome girl. I mean, she gave me I think like eleven, eleven or twelve eggs for her like first clutch. It was like two slugs and two infertile eggs, and then she gave me I think like eleven the next year. So it's like she gives big clutches, and she's not that big. She's like twenty five hundred grams maybe. Yeah, I was going to say, so since you're only on ASFs, what's your biggest female? Like, probably under 3,000 grams, right? Like, not not even... Dude, I got some friggin' oh, you got girls. Oh, yeah. you do? What's, like, like so... They're, like, over 3,000 grams easy. Okay. Like, several of them, yeah. All right. And, and you feed weekly? Yeah, weekly or sometimes bi-weekly, depends. Okay. And, and um, now, do you do anything for your breeding seasons as far as, like, any kind of cycling with either the temps or the food? Um being that you're in the boa game, I'm sure you cycling is a part of your like you know how to cycle them. I'm, I'm sure. So what do you what do you do with the ball pythons? So I keep all the males on like the lower end of the rack, so they're cooler right. overall. Right. Um, and then in general, like I have like a space heater in the room that generally keeps the room around like 80, 82 degrees. Um, being in Maryland, and like I have everything in the basement here, so it's like everything kind of drops a little bit at night. So I feel like Not I just good. have like a natural temperature drop that just kind of happens 
Do you know how low it goes? Do you know how low it goes? Like, because I know eight daytime, you said 80, 81, but do you know where it's dropping? I feel like it gets, I feel like it gets around like 76. Like sometimes oh. whenever I come in here, like either like middle, you know, two, three o'clock in the morning or something like that, it'll still be a little cooler despite having that, um, you know, basically the, the um, heater in here. Okay. And the ratio yeah. you're getting as far as how many females you pair to, to lay is like what, how many, what's your success rate? I mean, I wish I had kept track of that. That would be a great number to know, but I feel like overall it's like pretty high success. I want to say probably like a good, like 70 or 80%. The only females that don't really go are the ones that like, just, you know, sometimes you either miss the window or whatever, like that, the first ball Python that I picked up when I started, you know, kind of getting into them again, um, was in, uh, was 2018 and she's due to give me her first clutch, like here in like a couple weeks. No, so it's like she she took forever, and I tried breeding her like the last like two years, and she finally like decided to go like right now. So her time to like ovulate is in like January, you know, January February. So it's so her cycle is just weird, you know. So I've just missed it the last like two years. I don't know if I've said it on the podcast before, but in my experience, the younger girls are the ones that lower your average a little bit. Um, I, oh, yeah, I feel sure. like. I feel like at times we breed the, we breed these girls a little young, yeah, and there the probability of them going is, I don't know, someone out there, you could give your numbers in chat. I'd say the probability of a girl going in the third winter is probably 50, 60 percent, compared to mature girls going at a 90 percent clip. It doesn't hurt to wait a year for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then you get bigger eggs, better babies. I mean, that's that's what Levance does, right? Like the times he's been on here and the other stuff that he's done. I mean, he talks about that stuff. Like he's yeah. got these girls and he feeds them as you pretty wait. much as many mice as, he, as they want. Yep. And he gets them real big and he gets these, you know, 12, 14 egg clutches. And, you know, and the, you know, you're you're bound to hit the odds and the sexes you want on something that big, you know? Yeah, but, but say like, Go ahead. I'm sorry, Brian. Oh, no, I was going to say, like I had a, a – a female that gave me some babies this last year. She was a good sized female and she was ready to go. Um, but I got three like monster eggs from her. Like, I don't understand it. You know, yeah. I just, it's just how it goes. I don't know how true this is. And I can't remember where and this was a long time ago when I heard this, but I remember hearing where if a female lays, like, let's just say she lays at three years old, whatever. And she gives you about seven eggs it's always around that number, no matter how big she gets. I don't know. But but I will tell you, I have a female who's on her fourth year. She's never given me more than eight eggs. Um, so I don't know if that's true or not. I don't, and I bred her on her third year. So I don't know if that's a true thing either. I don't, but you, but you will oh, come on. But there are people out there who admit that there are snakes that every year lay around average around the same number of eggs, right? Yes. Yeah, probably. But ball pythons in the general, part, they're just not huge snakes. So it's like Yeah, but they're pretty you like know. you could you could kind of predict like once you have a uh once you're seasoned in the ball python game, you can almost predict what your female's gonna do. Like you 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 could almost call the shots, I feel like. What I would say to that on my end is most girls keep growing no matter what. When they until they reach a certain maturity, even if you breed them, let's say they give you a clutch young, they'll at least in my feeding regimen, I get those girls to get to that fifteen hundred gram girl. Yeah, I could get her to four thousand grams still. Yeah, you know she's. But the, yes, there are females that they stay stuck at a certain size. Mm. I mean, it, it just depends on the animal. Yeah, I mean, of course, I think what it comes down to, but also too, like, I don't know. I've, I I don't know if it's the luck I've had, but the girls who go for me like clockwork always gave me the same amount amount of eggs every year um i might be off by one or two or maybe at the most but it's always a same number of eggs you know um yeah. also is is are these are those specific girls is that their genetic limit i mean I it could be that it could it, it, it isn't necessarily what we're doing would, right. would any of you agree with that I mean, yeah, I think when they just they just get to their certain size and it's like, you know, like like that pinstripe girl, like she hasn't gotten any bigger, you know, I mean, she just, you know, keeps a good like body condition and whatever else. But I feel like she's going to continue, you know, basically having, you know, around, you know, 10 to 13 eggs, probably, if anything, you know, slightly, you know, more than that eventually. I don't know. But 
that's still a good number of babies to have. It's a good number of, you know, potential, you know, chances for whatever your goal animals are too. Before we get to Leviathan Super Chat, I wanted to say one thing before we lose it. Across the industry, okay, the average for a ball python clutch is 6.5. <laughs> I don't think that that's by mistake. <laughs> what happened? It's just, yeah. I, I think it's just a phrasing. I love your points. And I just because I've heard this be you, you've dropped this knowledge in the chat before. I mean, it is because and I track all that shit. It's facts. No, I love it. Like it's, I track it's, everything every year for myself, right? And I've heard this from the OGs, right? Right, right, right. Whenever I'm breeding a bunch of young girls, my average, average will dip down. under six, yeah. my average will dip under 6.5. Yeah. It'll get to 5.75. So, but when I'm not adding those young girls, I'm at 6.5. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we're talking about pythons and it's a race, my man. It's yeah. a race. So, um, some people, that's why I get, you know, when I had Levance on the show and he was so laid back and not, not really like, there's no fucking like time frame for anything. It is happens when it happens. I love, I was like the first top end breeder who I felt like wasn't in the race. Like he was just chilling, doing his fucking thing. You know what I mean? Um, he still is. Shout out to Levance and Wesley over at Straight Fire. And, and and anthony the, the the young ceo but yeah let's shout to leviathan leviathan snakes man um uh, they got a super chat uh for all three of us they have a question um so they're saying Aw awesome show tonight uh when you have time we do right now for you guys uh question for all three of us is what do you think ball python breeders getting in right now struggle with the most oh man who wants to go first on this one i think direction okay brandon went Tell us a little bit more about that. What do you mean? What do you mean direction? Like we talking project, the community they associate themselves with. Like what direction are we speaking here? All of it. You know, it's like I mean, first off, it's like finding the animals that you want, not getting steered the wrong way. So that could go into like the actual people you surround yourself with. Like you want to surround yourself with people that want to see you do well. You know, because if you do, like if you do well, everybody's going to do well. That's just the way that it works. And. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you're around people that steer you in the wrong direction to get into like the wrong projects, you're probably not going to be successful. You know, just the amount of sheer options that there are for projects, you know, it's it, it can it would definitely be daunting. Like, I'm glad that I like hung out and knew like a lot of ball python people coming up with like the boas because I already knew like how stuff worked. I already knew the genes, I already knew how the genes worked, I already knew what didn't work with what. Like, I already had, like, a pretty good grasp on, like, projects and genetics, you know, from that situation. So, respect. That, what do that's you have? my spiel. What do you have, E? For me, he, he took uh, one of the ones I was going to say, um, trajectory, uh, vision. Sometimes they're, they're, they're uh, focused on maybe copycatting a little bit, um, anxiousness. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. Anxiousness is the main one. I mean, I've been there. I was there once. Oh my God, what am I going to do with all these babies? You know, oh, you know, and then th that's crazy, right? Um, trying to compete mainly with the top tier very early uh, brings some of that anxiousness as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, you're, you're trying to compete with professionals that have been in the game for 15 plus years yes you know don't compare yourself to these people check uh, yourself yeah build you know be realistic build a brand be realistic dude listen be realistic seriously be realistic yeah. i'm sorry Emilio. And, and then you know wow. build build your collections um ensure you know what you buy is what you want to work with going forward make sure you have the right genes you might get something in there you don't want and then it could it could mess up everything. That, that's that's my opinion. Yeah, and honestly, it's hard to even top what you and Brandon said, Emilio, because direction's everything, right? And it means so much because direction is what ensures that you get to that next step. It really is. Because guess what, Mister Fucking, you got mad money in the bank. You ready to drop it? You ain't gonna just do it with money, okay? You gotta know the fucking people who will not only sell you a snake, but who's gonna fucking help you be successful with that snake. It's a lot more than just copying top tier animals. It's what are you going to do about it in the next three years? What are the moves? Okay. So, but instead of me copying Brandon, just saying direction, which I think is probably the biggest one I will say is they don't consider working with another species. I think people get into this thinking that 
I could be totally fine with 100 ball pythons in a rack and just be fucking every day's a water day and I'll never get bored. Well, if you're in really, if you're really a reptile person and you're really trying to tap into other stuff, you're literally doing yourself a disservice trying to get into a game that's so saturated like the ball pythons and only just do ball pythons. You better have something else going on to make you appreciate why you're waiting so long for ball pythons. That's what helped me just not worry about ball pythons and not, you know, have to fucking do repetitive stuff was just working with other species of reptiles if if you're really a reptile person and then three more three more words i want to say <laughs> passion passion commitment and lifestyle guys fuck the money it takes yeah. a real commitment to raise animals to breed for let's say doubles and triples pets right and then raising those animals Think about the commitment. Don't think about the money. And, and only that, like, okay, great. Let's say you have patience. Let's just say you have the – dude, what if something happens? What if the animal dies? Like, what if, like, you know how many people lose collections every year due to fires? Not to scare people, but, like, what are you going to do then? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's unfortunate, but so many fucking things can happen before you can even get your first clutch. So That's you got to be in this for the right reason. You have Brandon, to. Brandon, like, sure. MJ. All three of us. That is our worst fucking nightmare. Dude, that's why I wake up. I wake up randomly just coming to my room because I'm just, something gets me out of my sleep. Like, is my room okay? Like, I fear about that all the fucking time, bro. Like, I'm, I'm the worst so... part about going to shows. Yeah. Yeah. Or leaving. Like, you know, I yeah. do miss traveling. I miss the NARBCs. And, but, dude, you know how peaceful it is? I don't ever leave my house other than doing errands, of course. And, picking up Emilio from the airport or Mark Bailey. Like, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love being home because it's like, I'm. if anything goes down, like the flood, when that guy hit with that flood, what if I was gone in LA or dicking around? Or let's say I had a fucking nine to five I hated leasing my booth for. Dude, I would have came home to a fucking flooded ass room. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm, I'm very blessed that I could be around here so much, but it's also like things happen. Like, Things out of your control, the weather, like so many things happen that people aren't ready. Like think about people who, who get in around springtime and they're, they don't even know that their winter is going to affect their room as bad as, as it does. And next thing you know, everything's not eating, everything's shut off. And now you have things that you wanted to breed that can't even breed. Cause it's, guess what? They haven't eaten since fucking June. You know what I'm saying? So there's just a lot of things that people need to consider before getting ahead of themselves for sure. So don't, do not compare compare your somebody do not compare yourself to somebody who's been in this game 10 plus years and when you've been in the game for a year or two that's a joke and there are a lot of people out there who are like that just so you know sorry anyways great question that was a really good question yes, loaded <laughs> very loaded, loaded. <laughs> you know, but loaded. i think just to touch on what you said about like other species and stuff too it's like other animals are i mean they're just fun like I do like enjoy the ball pythons. I enjoy inter interacting with them. Like the ball pythons, you could just take one out, go chill on the couch, watch a show with it. And it's like, they're just going to hang out, you know? And it, and it is nice to just have like animals that you can just like interact with and, and mess around with. And it is nice to like, you know, you know, kind of pull, you know, pull out all the different species, the lizard stuff that that's not for me. I had a tree monitor briefly. <laughs> briefly. They, yeah, I mean, it, well, from your your favorite, well, not your favorite. I say that very sarcastically. Just but I got, yeah, I got a green from oh, Joe, yeah. and it did fine. It did <laughs> it did so good. It did so good. Yeah. Um, but I got a blue from him, and it did not do well. It died, and then he sent me another one, a replacement, like an adult female, and it wouldn't eat for me. So I sent it back, and I also got a basin from him at the time too, and that died too. So. Damn, bro. That's why usually when you roll a dice with Joe and one of them is good, you don't ever go back. It's like a casino. See, the, 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 you the problem you was the first take, one was take good. Money, you leave, bro. Like whatever winnings you get with Joe, you leave and that's it. But I, but it's hard to do that when he gets the shit that he gets. Trust they, me, bro. I go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's just that the green tree monitor that I had, man. She was she was so cool. Like, yeah, she would eat like directly from my hand. I would like mist her. I would hand feed her. Like. She was a cool lizard. I could hold her. She was she was really awesome. But everything after that, terrible, and it kind of <laughs> ruined ruined the species. It ruined like lizards for me. You know, maybe one day, but 
not for their foreseeable future. I, I like the uh, the ease of the snakes. You know, they're they're a lot different of a responsibility than like a lizard is. You appreciate the ball pythons more if you go out, go see what else out is out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I mean, oh, get getting ball pythons going from boas. It's just like these, just like you say all that you said in like a lot of the podcasts or whatever. Like, they care about you. Yeah, they want to show their appreciation for you providing sustenance and water and housing by yep. giving you eggs like they want to <laughs> you know it's yeah they, they uh, appreciate all the stuff you do for them now you know kind of you know i just want to think of so many other things though first-time breeders go run into obstacle wise um and, and i'm curious like brandon i've talked about this plenty of times on my show there are people out here just kind of looking like they like reptiles and they see this hobby and they just want to get the fuck away from their current life situation and and meaning they might not come into this with a lot of money but they like it right and step by step day by day but when do you feel like it's necessary for someone to look at what they're doing and say i should invest in a freedom breeder rack or like something where okay now you're looking at something that is in a eight pvc shelved rack to where now you have something about 30 snakes now um but at what point do you feel like it's worth someone who's new in the game investing into the equipment that costs just as much as high-end snakes that's hard because it's like you could, in theory, purchase snakes to produce and breed and then pay for that rack, right? Yeah, right. You know, so it's like if you can do that, that would be the ideal situation. If you're able to do like a come up and you're able to find one locally, then get it as soon as you can. Um, and mostly it's just for like the like the sturdiness. Like, I don't know, like. All of the PVC racks that I ever had, I, I really liked using animal plastics racks, but you also had to wait like eight months to get the damn things. Yeah. So it's like you have to wait like such a long amount of time, you know, thing like the PVC panels could break. I mean, there's all kinds of things like the heat tape is always like weird. The temperatures you can't control the same way that you control like an air can control an ARS rack. Um, overall, I just I, I just like the ARS like core freedom breeder systems. Um, as, as far as that stuff goes, the, the tubs, I mean, the tubs are going to stay the same. Like you don't have to worry about the rack tubs, like becoming obsolete and no longer making them. Are you, you, a, know, are you, are you a spray advocator? Do you like to spray? Like mist them or whatever? Hmm. No, I don't really do that. I usually like what I've been doing lately and I've had a bit of success with it is for like the babies specifically. Cause I use uh, Cypress. Okay. I used to, I used to actually use the chipper and I did like it. Um, but the guy that I would get it from was like three hours away. Um, so it's like, I just didn't want to deal with that drive. And, but I, I, I did like the big blocks for the adults. Um, but the Cypress works really well. So I'll either just like dump the water on them when they're in shed, or I just like flip the tub around. So the water's over the heat panel. And then that kind of gives a little bit extra humidity within the tub itself. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Cypress is such, like that's an OG thing. I feel like anyone who's been in the game for years uses Cypress. Like uh, Mark Bailey uses Cypress. I know other people, a bunch of people in Florida from what I know use Cypress. I know Emilio doesn't. Emilio, you use the chipper. You use fucking the, the cocoa substrate, right? Yeah, I use the chipper now. I used Aspen for a long time. I got tired of the dust and a little bit of the, the molding. Um, I love the I love the cocoa now. Um, I switched 100. percent I distribute it. I'm happy um yeah. i tried cypress back in the day real quick and i didn't give it much time um i switched to the ad to the aspen um i don't know uh you know there's lots of uh good breeders out there ogs using it you know i don't see why not yeah brandon i know you're talking about sharing a table at tinley um but have you been at any shows other than tinley before just just the local ones here and how how do those go normally Meh. I mean, you sell something. Great. You don't. Do you sell something every show or not every show? Not every show. We like we did. We had like I mean, literally, it's like one or two snakes. Like relatively, like it's it, the ones around here. They haven't really seemed worth it. And then I like get myself in like a spot where it's like I'm excited for it because I'm like, okay, this is going to be the show that it actually like does something and. I don't know, man. It's like I, we have, you know, pretty, pretty decent setup. We have a good location. We're like with, you know, some friends. So it's like we have like a, a spot and it's, you know, it, it does really well. And especially like having the boas, people come by and they're like, oh, my God, like pretty much the only person that has boas. Right. 
Yeah. <laughs> and they're beautiful and they're this and they're that. And it's like, but you know, just, just around here, like I said, it's, it's too much saturation. Someone will be like, Oh, like, these are cool. Like, well, you know, like, we'll see what you have like next show. And it's like, all right. That's all right, uh, like, I don't, I don't know how to like, even like reply to that, you know, it's like, but you're here at this show, but then there's like another show like the next weekend. So it's like, there's no sense of urgency. Um, I feel like in this area. Don't, you know, no the, I don't want to shit on the people who attend the shows, but God damn, I hate it when that fucking person who's like, they're lollygagging to your table and they're like looking at your stuff and then they try to like school you on your shit. Like, or they try to like tell you what they have. Like, like you're supposed to be like, oh my God. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, okay. <laughs> I don't know about you, but yeah, fuck, some of them, some of them fucking gas themselves up a little much out there. And I'm like, dude, fucking all right you're out of show <laughs> just like, <laughs> there's there's interesting characters for sure um i do have i do have higher aspirations for um you know because do, doing like the whole tinley thing and whatever just just to like bring like a small amount of amount of animals there like i'll just bring some some uh blood pythons and some and a couple ball pythons and nice you know just kind of see what see what happens you know talk just talk with people hang out you know overall just make it a good a good outing i'm not gonna you know? i can't give specifics man but i found out a homie hit me up recently um who's in the tree monitor game and he was stoked he's like yeah, i just got a call from bob ashley right now i'm like what happened what bob say bob asked if i wanted to take wet tilly i'm like what he's just called you randomly he's like yeah he want to know if i want to bring some tree monitors and like some grasshoppers i guess they're they're shaving down some ball python so they're shaving down some ball python tables and bringing other people with diversity in and i'm like wow so like literally some ball python people are getting the boot at tinley i don't know who but i that, think that's, that's that's smart i mean well I that's mean, very, I say, I like that's in very the future smart. in the future i feel like there are gonna be less of less ball python breeders out there that's all i'm gonna say oh for sure 100 I mean, they have to i think yeah but I mean, there, there's there's a reason why the majority of animals on Morph Market are ball pythons, though. There's a huge sector of interest for ball pythons, right? Um, you know, aside, but you know, but you know, I like I'm definitely not gonna you know do anything different. Like the ball pythons are definitely going to be a main a main focus here. Um, moving, you know, kind of the the boa stuff away is allowing me the ability to bring up more blood pythons. Um, you know, blood pythons are, are one of my like first, you know, snakes that I wanted to get. Like they're just yeah. an awesome snake, you know, yeah. same thing with the berms, but the berms, they're not something that I'm going to be breeding a lot of. I'm going to be doing like a handful of pairings every couple of years. Um, I only have, I only have five of them anyway. So it's not like I have a huge collection of berms. Um, and I only plan on breeding the the one pair that I have together right now this year, probably. Um, and then I have another high end pair that I will plan on breeding, you know, probably every like two or three years or well, I'll probably breed them whenever I get a clutch from them and providing I make the male that I want, I'll breed him, you know, every two or three years, you know, I wish, depending on. I wish I would have got one berm clutch before I got rid of my female. I really do. Cause berms are so cool, you know, but again, a whole giant lot of, ball python. That's a whole lot of animal, you know. <laughs> so, but I don't. I, they're definitely not as pussy as a ball python. Like they don't. They don't. They don't ball up whatsoever. They just sit oh, there. No. They're, yeah. they're just a big fucking. They just. You know what I mean? Um. But I love them. They're. They're. That's the true puppy dog. Like big snake. I feel like the the the, the Burmese. Um. Oh, I yeah. trust a big Burmese more than a retic all day every day for sure. Oh uh, yeah. And yeah. I like, I like berms. I wish they were legal. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, they yeah. are if you're not in, you know, yeah. a little panhandle down there. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, me, me, and Brandon were talking about uh, um, Burme um, pied berms and albino pied berms and and the caramels and I, I, man, those animals are beautiful. And by the way, uh, a berm hatchling blows away a ball python hatchling. I mean, a lot of a lot. I mean, even a retic hatchling does. A retic I mean, hatch, a I, Retics are gorgeous, bro. Like, yeah. A, uh, yeah. man, it, it is crazy how if a retic or a Burmese didn't have the reputation of what it has and it stayed like a ball python, ball pythons wouldn't be what they are right. Like, they would have way more competition right now. Like, yeah. 
Like yeah. for sure, the colorations on a on a crazy morph for tick shits on almost any ball python out there. I want to say it's crazy. You'll you'll fall into a deep hole looking up blood pythons though. And bloods, yeah, bloods the same way with bloods. And you know, shout out again to tonight's sponsor uh, Elijah from Juggernaut Reptiles. But my whole obsession with bloods came because when I started following that guy, bro. When I when he his his black um, short tails that he would breed, bro. Like I've never oh, seen. I've any. got some from him. I had they're some black. too, man. And yeah, they're they're black, dude. I've never they are, seen they are black. shadow snakes. Jet black, bro. Oh my god, he's the real deal when it comes to that shit. For real. Oh, yeah. I, a lot, a lot of my bloods one. are from him. Yeah, shout out to Elijah. I held one of his animals at Tinley. Yeah, in, in twenty two. I got a picture with that. That thing is smoking. Yeah. I love. Yeah. I love. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I was, I was gonna say they're friendly. Like yeah. people give them a bad rap. They like don't get me wrong, like a little hatchling can be, you know, a little crazy sometimes. Yeah, they grow out of that. But like, but as long as you like support their full body, they're they're just gonna hang out. They're chill. Like, you know, they, they get a bad rap for no reason, you know, and it's they're they're beautiful animals. The ugliest they will ever be is when they're a baby. <laughs> Seriously, like they oh, just God. get better and better as they get older. Like especially especially before their first shed, they just look like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they look like shit for about three months, and then they finally yeah. shed, and yeah. then they, you know, they start taking on better and better colors every every chance they get. So, hey, but how about how about how about how about working with a snake? I don't know why I stuttered like that, but how about working with a snake that takes like three months to shit sometimes? <laughs> oh, yeah, probably longer. I think somebody said their blood went over a year. I think like 14, 15 months with no shit, and then it shit, and it was the size of my oh, fucking yeah. arm. That's crazy. That's mine, mine will usually probably only go like once every six months or so. See? Like my like my adults. But dude, yeah. when they go, they go, bro. It's nasty. Yeah. It's it's like a horse shit. Clydesdale. Yeah, that's they cool. they save it up for you. But they do pee a lot. So yeah, that's one thing that I um I went over to a buddy's place not not too long ago, and he's got a larger collection of uh, blood pythons, and he keeps and I, and I know Elijah, he keeps a lot of his stuff on paper too. Yeah, um, I'm gonna pull mine off of the the cypress here pretty soon when I because I have some um, like unprinted newspaper coming and I'm gonna move them to that because they do pee a lot. Yeah, um, they don't they don't poop a lot, but they do pee a lot. So it's you know sometimes you'll like open up the tub and it's like a little musty. So then you have to like peel a corner of like you know bedding or whatever out and replace it and stuff. So that's, that's I why think I... just going to the cypress or going to the paper is better to just keep good airflow and everything in the tub. So Mark, Mark Bailey was in my room yesterday and was going through some stuff and he knows all my adults are on paper. And he's like, he's like, when are you going to switch? Like when are you, cause paper is a lot of work. Like it's, you smell it and you have to work. But for me, like anything that pisses a lot, I don't want on a substrate. I don't want it on cocoa chip because if you spot clean, whatever, what about all the other stuff that it just all sits that to was, the bottom? Yeah, it's like, dude, are you that? I, I'm just like thinking to myself, like, dude, that doesn't work. The sparkling don't work. If you see a bad shit, all that needs to go. You got to wipe it down and replace it. And I know paper for my schedule for how I do things is it, it's glorious. It's like, oh, I smell something. Let me replace that. Wipe it down and put another piece of paper. So I, yeah. I'm just I'm very sold on all this being on substrate and my babies, but my adults, especially my um bigger pythons like the scrubs and stuff like that that just piss fucking all the damn time like i don't like i i prefer making my life easier with the paper but i will tell you that's yeah. kind of why i have to struggle with some stuck shed sometimes because paper is fucking not going to give you glorious humidity like the cocoa uh, like the chipper does so i don't know i i just I, I feel like maybe at some point i should switch over but i just i'm kind of somebody who's if something works for you already don't switch it you know and i and i just like i like having paper a part of the regiment at least a little bit I don't know. Call me yeah. crazy. But um, I do want to say, though, you know, anyone out there who's considering investing in any project in the ball Python game, um, what what are some do's and don'ts when it comes to doing homework on projects? You would say, Brandon, um, as far as like I know we were talking direction, but like it's it, I feel bad because people come to me and they ask me for questions and I and I can easily just say, well, do with what do with what, what you uh, want to work with. Right. But when the options are that fucking broad, when there's that many options, some people might have a hard time dialing what it is that they should work with. So how does somebody find direction when they don't have any direction to begin with? I mean, I think kind of what you said, right, too. It's like you you want to work with something you you like specifically, not just because it's, it's valuable or whatever else, right? It's like right. you need to have an interest. Now, I will say you should, um, you know, take into consideration 
like the market trends and stuff like that and then work your own angle you know like you know one of the things that emilio and i have talked about several times is like true ghost stuff yeah. you know it's like Fine. like Fine. i I freaking love it. Like I have a lot of stuff for it. I'm making stuff for it. Like that is my like direction and to go into like what kind of project or what I would think about when I'm considering a project is I would consider how many people are currently working towards that project and take that into consideration. Because at the end of the day, if everybody is making the same stuff, you're not going to have people that are willing to purchase it because everybody already has it. You need to work in a direction that is adjacent to the market interest as well as a project or look that you personally enjoy. So should somebody stay far the fuck away from pastel or should they not, should that not matter? Like, I'm just curious. I like pastel. So I think that you, there's a few projects that I don't think that pastel works great in. That's clown G stripe and monsoon. So outside of that, pastel arguably does extremely well. Like pastel puzzles look amazing. Pastel yeah. tri-stripes look amazing. Pastel zebras, like it's arguably better with pastel in them. There's some stuff that's very pastel neutral. Like some things look okay, you know, not really for better, not for worse. Like I've seen some pastel sunsets that look pretty cool and other ones that don't look that great. You know, it's just, it's just a matter of like, your application right like like i thought about taking a mail that i have to a pastel exantha cut pied um because it has a gene that i would not prefer to have pastel in i decided that despite how beneficial that could be i don't potentially want to make my dream animal from that project and it have pastel so you have to take those factors into consideration but a lot of stuff i think works really well with pastel it just can't be very specific projects i agree this guy hates it i don't know why but this guy hates it <laughs> bro what are you talking about i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding i just kidding. don't have 35 percent of my collection that's all yeah like like the ball python market that's all i'm saying guys but also, like, okay, but in, in some seriousness, right? Like, there are some things that people really want to work with that are out of reach price wise because there's shit gets expensive. Let's be real, right? But if somebody comes across something that is a reputable het or 100% double het and it has pastel, who gives a fuck? If you really are working for that recessive, shoot, I mean, and you're, and you could get a deal on that or whatever. I don't think pastel should be in your way. Like even if oh, it's a cheese stripe sure. or something, because you could just easily work it out. All you want is if like if pastel really fucks it up, breed it and just look for something that doesn't have the pastel in it and keep that, you know. Oh, I got some stuff even worse because of that same exact reason. <laughs> like like I picked up um some spider Mojave double het monsoon DG from uh, Brock. And it's Spy like that again? Spider Mon Spider Spider Mojave Double Het Monsoon DG. Damn. So it's like you know, beggars can't be choosers, right? Like, yeah, for real, it just, it just kind of is what it is. Like, I, I am debating on letting go of that male and then just holding on to the female because if I do keep him, I don't want to take him to like other DG or Het Monsoon stuff that I have and then potentially right. reproduce a spider because that's not going to go well with my female, yeah. you know. And, it, and and spider gets a bad rap. I mean, spider combos are beautiful, you know. Yeah. They just they just got a bad rap for a little bit and they have never recovered. You know, it just kind of is what it is. But but you know, it's you know sometimes you do have to take that loss or take that you know hit, get the animal, and then you breed it to whatever things you want, and then build your stuff off of that because you can get a come up with like a lot of stuff for taking a gene that's less desirable. You just don't want to build off the rest of the collection with that you want to use that very sparingly as far as especially if it's a male if it's a female whatever you know you're only getting one clutch out of that thing like every year or two so <laughs> as a male you don't want to run that thing to like 10 girls and now you have 10 clutches of you know pastels or spiders or whatever you know yeah that's key right there um what i would tell you is everyone has something they're dealing with in their collection that they have to work out so yeah facts I mean, that's everybody even the biggest of the big dogs. So 
I'll tell you what I'm struggling with. Um, and Emilio, you you were here and you looked at my Wookie Butter Clown. That's a fucking pretty snake, right? Remember that Wookie Butter Clown? Now remember when I got my when I purchased that snake from Mark, um, he charged me less than the Wookie Clown, and I'm like, why? And he's like, well, dude, you know, butter's making you know, butter would do that, and that's when I learned the whole like, oh wow, there's morphs out there that make a certain project in a snake cheaper, and I'm like, that's wild because that fucking thing turned out really nice and it's aging great. But what do I do with that now? Do I roll the dice and just see? what butter does to the next project with Wookiee and clown in it, or do I ditch the butter? I don't know. Based on what I'm seeing, I see that butter should not be ditched. I think, period. Yeah. I think you keep it for a hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. Like, dude. So one, like one pairing that I did this year again, because I missed on it the year before is I wanted to make a, um, a, a lesser banana um, fire clown. They're beautiful. They're like blonde and cream. Like they're, they're such a beautiful snake. Like that was one of the first holdbacks from, from 23 or 20. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. 23, whatever year it was last year. And you know, it's, it's just such a, a beautiful, beautiful snake. And if you've seen like lesser Xanthics, which a lot of stuff is, you know, kind of trending toward Xanthic stuff, like the bell complex and Xanthic turns out really, really nice because they already have a very silver kind of color to them in general. So it's like the those those animals are going to be very valuable towards those projects for sure. Yeah. And they just look nice. Like they they just look cool. Like lesser butter clowns, like they give a really unique pattern, like aberrancy that you just don't get with like Mojave clowns or whatever. Like you just don't get it. Right. Very it, different. It just leads back to like how pastel, you know, work it right and it shows that it has mad relevance into what we're doing, you know, and almost every gene does in a sense. That's why it's like, you know, I don't know. I think it was Justin who said, well, there's no such thing as an overhyped morph. Cause you could really work with, you could really take almost anything to the capacity of it. Right. But okay. Slow down, Justin. Yes, there is. <laughs> there's a couple overhyped things out there. Let's be real. Um, but really, man, it's at the end of the day, you, you, you got to block out whatever noise you feel like doesn't fit with how you feel in here. Cause like I said, I love showing that butter Wookiee clown off to people and I'm like, I know what I see here, and they ain't nothing cheaper about this snake. This snake's fucking great, and I'm just gonna run off that that experience and go. It's from just there. you, you can't, it, you just can't propagate too much with it. That's all, you know, right? Pretty much. What do you, what do you mean? You can't just push it too much. You can't have a ton right. of that. Right, that's right. All. Oh, right, right. Yeah, you uh, can't, you can't again, be like, you can't, you can't be like butter everything. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm advocating with pasto, and and you know, I I'll say it with butter and lesser and. You know, you know, out of the the genes we were just talking about, Mojave is the most, um, I would say, versatile. I really like the versatility of, that Mojave brings um, out of those three genes. I don't know if you agree with that, Brandon. Yeah, I mean, I think Mojave probably gets a less bad rap in comparison because like yeah. lesser butter stuff with pies, you end up with a very high, you, I mean, you end up with a white pie is what you end up with. Yeah. Little so it's white. like, that's, so that's like very limiting, yeah. you know, but you know, it's like Mojave does give you pattern in pies. Mojave is also darker and more contrasty. So I mean, it really just depends, but I think there's opportunities for all of those genes to be mixed in with things that work well for them. For sure. Yeah. Right. Now, when do you feel like someone should switch gears? And what I mean by that, like, you know, nobody's perfect. I mean, I know I've gotten into this at a point where I had to look at what I had and said, I don't fuck like this needs to go. And I, I acted on it pretty quickly. But in, in with your guys' experience and what projects, when do you feel like someone should switch gears and fucking do something about it um, over based off of what? What would you guys say? I didn't want to jump in and just cut Emilio off if he was about to come out with something. You know, he, but, Emilio would speak first if you wanted to speak first. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, no, but um, for me, it's just a matter of, like, prioritizing, right? Like, so for me, like, I there, – there's only so many animals that you should really, like, want to take care of to do it to a higher ability, right? Like, you don't want to be overwhelmed is what it comes down to. And – you know, if that means basically chopping off projects, then that's just what it is. Like I dropped off like my can my candy stuff. I dropped off my lavender stuff. I dropped off my tri-stripe stuff. Mm. And I was in the process of dropping off my desert ghost stuff. 
um, before this year's breeding season. And likely whenever I produce DG stuff this after this season, I will probably let all of it go. Like there's not going to be any holdbacks. I'm not going to push any of that stuff further. And it's mostly because I want to focus more on my Ultramel, my Monarch, my Sunset, my Monsoon, like those projects I want to focus on a lot more. And I can't do that if I have 10 plus recessives, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I want to do the, I want to do a smaller number of recessives at a higher quality, um, you know, and, and for that, those sacrifices need to be needed to be made on some of the other projects. So that's what was ultimately the deciding factor for me as far as, as far as that goes. Well, for me, um, I need to enjoy opening up that tub. I need to have goals with uh, set animals. Um, I need to have, uh, I need to be locked into a vision uh, for the most part. Yeah, I have my pet stuff here and there. Um, I, I, I'll always have that. Um, I'm, I'm, I pride myself on being that guy, uh, bringing in some of the new, the you know, the new keepers in the game. Um, but yeah, when it comes to the investment side and the future, the combos, I need to enjoy opening that tub and the progression i see in the animal yeah i mean i i also wanted to just think as far as like you know you can't really avoid certain situations that land in your lap especially when you come into it and i know there's so many people out there who are like yeah i just want to raise everything and start from scratch but what if you have an opportunity to take over someone's proven female or, or proven male or whatever right um i know a lot of things could like i mean there's a lot of things to look into when it comes to purchasing something that's been in someone's collection for a while. Um, but should someone avoid trying to figure out if they could get breeding down their first year? Like, do, do you, do you encourage that Brandon? Or do you feel like, you know, just don't rush it and let your stuff you're raising, uh, you know, breed that stuff instead. Like well, what's your, what's your take on people kind of almost looking to get adults so they can hurry up and breed. I mean, I feel like starting with hatchlings is way better. Yeah, like, sure. it's, it's also way more rewarding too, you know, but on the same flip side of that, like, let's just say, you know, you, you know, you purchase hatchlings from like, if you are coming in, you buy hatchlings from somebody and you enjoyed that whole process, whatever you got good, solid animals. And, you know, let's say that they do have a, a, like one or two females available, you know, like that work within those same projects and you could basically get like a ready to go trio you know it's like that would be pretty good especially if it's somebody that you know like it's not some rando off the street basically it's like somebody that you have some form of you know whatever with you know i feel like that's a better situation to where you could potentially get in a situation where you could produce a clutch or two see if you like it kind of get rid of any potential hiccups and you know learning curves that you need to round out you know, I think that that is a, a good option, but if, you know, if, you know, bringing up hatchlings of your own is, is the most ideal situation. And I'm sure Milo, you've had people who've inquired after like buying a snake, maybe ask you for adults or ask you for proven breeders and, and you know, they're new. And what do you say to that? Well, this last year I, I sold a couple adults. Um, I, you know me, I advocate for people to raise their animals but if i have a customer that really 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 wants an adult once in a while i'll let a couple go um i don't know man i get attached to my my girls i, I really don't let them go for the most part but um what i would tell people out there is uh and you guys you know can give me your your opinion on this uh when you sell an adult female it's 50 50 if she's gonna assimilate and go for you so you're still gonna have to wait some don't even adjust well and don't go for you for for years so it's not a guarantee that you are going to get that clutch as fast as you want yeah there's no guarantees in anything no matter how you look at it um and you know what I and mean, that's a really good point because females go through stuff too like you don't understand snakes go from especially a well-seasoned snake it's you know snakes get real acclimated to a room and when they switch from room to room, there's possibilities that snake might even ever breed again. There's been a lot of uh, situations where females who've done great seasons with one person just stop breeding after they go to another room. 
I'm not saying it's common, but it does happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and how do you how do you want to approach that being new? You don't want to deal with that being a new person. Yeah. Like you, you know, now you're gonna have to worry about just feeding something that just doesn't breed for you. And and Brandon, you go ahead and I have one more point to add to this. Mm. <laughs> did you have did you have anything to add, Brandon? I mean, you already, you already I mean, said not really. I just think that that would be just like discouraging for someone that just got in, right? They get like this adult animal, then they have these problems, like it comes to them, it decides it doesn't want to eat, they try and breed it, like nothing happens. They try and breed it the next year, nothing happens. Yep. And that same time they could have bought a hatchling and raised it up those two, three years and gotten it just fine. Yeah, I had you a buddy know? that bought a 1200 gram uh, female from me. She shut down, stopped eating. And then I had, and uh, that was a young one, right? Uh, then he got an older female that was solid for me. like. She gave me eight clutches at least, right? Seven to eight clutches. Uh, that girl didn't eat for a full year. Okay, a full yeah. year went on a complete mm, fast. Not, not surprised. And then, and then, she freaking now she's eating like a beast, and she's probably gonna give him a clutch. Now I had another customer that he got a younger girl from me that I didn't need anymore. Guess what? She's got twenty millimeter follicles right now. So the the key for these people, uh, for these uh, bre younger breeders or, or novice breeders, is maybe asking, you know, the breeder that they're getting the animal from, is this is how old is this female? How many clutches does she have under her belt? The younger female might might have a better chance of producing for them. You know, so. Yep. It's a good point. I'm just, you're, I mean, you're, you're up against a lot of odds when it comes to that. That's all we're saying yeah. versus yeah. just versus just chilling. And no matter what, in two, three years, what you're raising is going to be ready to rock and roll. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and it, it, even with the stuff behind here, like I've had so many people who's been successful with chondros and emeralds say like when it comes to you breeding something you raise like United States captive born and bred, there's no, like you don't run to a lot of these issues. Like a lot of it is fucking straightforward because there's just something solid about an animal that you raise from scratch, you know, uh, because it's used to you. It's used to everything that you do, the room, like everything, you know what I mean? So, and it's just more rewardable. Like you said, there's nothing more enjoyable, you know, having something that you've basically gave earth to from a little age to now it's breeding for you and it's providing for your hobby and, and putting it back. It's, it's a good feeling. You know what I'm saying? Um, but check it out. I got a wrap up question for you. And Emilio has a wrap up question for you too. And uh, my wrap wrap up question for you, Brandon, is um, just what would kind of be your your go to right now um, if you were to kind of take all your experience, everything that you learned. Um, let's just say money really wasn't an issue or whatever, um, and you were coming into the ball python game 2024 with the knowledge that you have. How would you move? Like, what would what would what would be the first thing you would want to invest in or or what would, what would be your 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 way to maneuver in the in the ball python game in 2024 with like the cheat mode of knowing all, all everything that you know right now i mean that's hard to say because again there's there's so many so many projects you know part of me wants to just be you know go you know full bore sunset because it's like you know that's my oh, that's God. my thing that i really enjoy i'm not going to do that to you i'm not going to subject you to that i'm just kidding i'm just kidding you know, but but it's it, it's so hard because there's so many so many options. I know like I would really explore like the incomplete dominance that have good super forms. I would also really explore like other pattern mutations and and color mutations, right? So it's like you know the super hurricanes, the super chocolates, the super blackheads. You know, like the like. I mean, like even like monsoon, like, you know, people give monsoon flack because the pattern is whatever, you know, they think it's too strong, but that's kind of the point. Like, that's the point of monsoon. The point of monsoon is to look like that, you know, like I'm not trying to change the pattern of a monsoon. I'm trying to change the color and the contrast of the monsoon, you know? So it's like, for me, it's like, that's what I would want to do. I would want to make the most contrastiest, like brightest, you know, with like the lights and the darks, like the, the spectrum of colors, like within like a monsoon, within like a super hurricane, within like super gravel combos, you know, like I would like to explore those things 
and then changing the color on top of that with you know stuff like ultramel with sunset with monarch with exanthic with you know hypo like i freaking love hypo like that's like the unsung hero of like a lot thank of thank you wow finally i haven't heard much dg come out of this guy's mouth all night too i'm not i'm just saying hype he the hypo statement right now facts heavily facts right there that was great. hey man i've always said i respect you not fucking even. respect everything you just said right now i'm a huge brandon nixon fan actually. i've been saying that <laughs> shit in all the chats i do not want to change monsoon's pattern stop it please fucking yeah. respect. <laughs> It's it is just funny though because that's what people talk about. The first thing that people say like negative about monsoon is is that well that hasn't changed the pattern. Well that hasn't changed the pattern. It's like that's the point. Yeah. Like that's that's like the you point of it to look the way that it looks. Yeah. Like it, it's supposed to look like that. Like and, and who knows? Like you know, like I'm sure people have seen like hurricane pinstripes or even puzzle pinstripes. Puzzle pinstripes look really crazy. Yeah, you know, it would be really interesting to throw puzzle in like a monsoon and see if you could even widen up like the pattern within the monsoon to allow more space for more colors to come through. I mean, there's so many different like untapped areas of potential for so many projects. You know, right. it's not everything needs to go into a clown. Not everything needs to be a clown for it to be a successful project. But every, you know, everything needs to go into hypo for sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, every everything yes. does need to go into hypo though. Yeah. Yes. That is that is accurate. That is so accurate. You cannot challenge that because hypo makes everything age better. It's the facts. Like it it just I'm telling you, hypo is like the fucking like it's like the gift humans wish they had to make to to, to look younger. You know what I'm saying? It's the yeah. truth. I love hypo. And it's and it's very different from like DG because people say yeah. the same thing for DG, right? But dg softens and enhances the look of something right so it gives like a little bit of extra contrast it softens like the color it cleans it up a bit but it doesn't give the same like like the the oomph that like a hypo does because a hypo will soften it also but it also maintains a lot of colors and it brings in like a lot of weird like blues and greens and yellows and like all these kind of like vibrant like extra colors into the animal Right. And and there's so much variety, like, you know, hypo pides, right? Hypo pides are like orange. Those are and so hypo beautiful. and hypo clowns are like a, a blue gray color. Yep. Like it's a it's a very like interesting ability to to change like that look just with hypo. Yep. And hypo saved Gigi's ass too, 110 percent I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. Uh what you got, Mila? What do you what do you got for Brent? All right, this is funny, but uh, I'm gonna bring it up. Um, I think me and you have some similarities, right? So I'm gonna ask you this: Anyone ever tell you you're intense? One, and do they ask you to smile? And do they ask you if you're mad all the time? All of those things, yeah. Bro, I get all that shit all the time. You guys do. I'm not gonna lie. Because if Emilio wasn't so comfortable with me, he's very stone-faced like you. Like, if Emilio doesn't know you, he doesn't let you read him very easily at all. He's pretty fucking, like, you know what I mean? And, and I'm not going to lie, Brandon, in the beginning, you didn't give me much at all. And I was kind of like, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> but you're, it's just your personality. You're great. I like well, that. Yeah, that, I mean, that's just the way I am. Even, even like, at work, like, whenever I go and, like, grab patients or bring, like, patients back and stuff, too. Like, I, right. I definitely make some some dad jokes at him and stuff. <laughs> so i love it man i love and it, it and it's and it's funny because like some of my coworkers will give me like a hard time about it because i work in like a vascular office doing ultrasounds right and like sometimes you'll have people that come in that have had like diabetes and like whatever you know so sometimes they're missing toes and i'll like joking jokingly ask them like what you know did that piggly wiggly go to the market or whatever and and it's just like not probably ideal but they they know it's like a joke you know what i mean but and you have to read the person. You have to read if they're going to, like, take that well or not. You know what I mean? Oh, I would be, I, I'd probably be terrible at that. <laughs> would you yeah. eat yourself again? <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, my God. It's, defi that it's definitely something. But I definitely have heard some, like, you said that to them? And it's like, yeah, like, they're cool. Like, it's fine. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> Broke the ice. You know, they're good. Yeah, uh, they're good. Fuck. Hey, what a show, Brandon. This uh, kind of 
definitely uh, surpassed my expectations as far as, you know, how, how great it was, you know, and no, no, no offense, but this was a really awesome show. Your knowledge with everything is just top tier when it comes to a new breeder on the block segment. I don't think you're meant to be on this segment, but I, I appreciate you being here and laying it all down. It's kind of like when I brought Emilio on and Emilio, like his, it was, his episode was so impactful on like teaching you shit. And it's kind of like, Whoa, what are you, you know, he's not really a new breeder, but at the end of the day, I just love getting to know you better. And whoever didn't get to know you as well now knows you like how I know you. And this was a great time. I appreciate you a lot, bro. Yeah, I appreciate it. And, and, and I mean, ball pythons are fairly new, you know, to me. So it's, right. I mean, it just kind of is what it is, you know. Yeah. But and, and I got to say, you act like your demeanor isn't cocky. Like you don't come off like you ex like, oh, do you know what I did in the boa game? You better give me some respect. Like you don't have any of that kind of fucking energy. And I love that. That's why I always thought you were new because I always thought like, dude, this guy just, he's been putting in his time quietly. He, he's fucking putting out sick ass content with good pitchers. And that's what made me put respect on your name. But man, you, you have way more respect than what I've seen on your, on your, on your uh, Instagram, bro. So just shout out to you and shout out to giving us such a great episode tonight. Yeah. It's a, uh... I don't know. Att attention's weird to me. Like I'd rather just be <laughs> quiet and like no one notice me, and I just like hang out in the back. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I feel you. I'm I'm, I'm fine with with I like not it. having a spotlight <laughs> on me. Just is what it is. But. Oh man. Well, this was a fun time. Before we let you lose the spotlight for the rest of the night, um, you got to go through these hot seat questions. Are you cool with that? We will. We will make our way through. Although All I right. can't promise uh, good answers on some of them. Just the quickest. The quickest is the most. I know. Fun. That's no it. JPs, no. I know. No JPs. I mean, and, and, and I don't mean no JP as it. We're just meaning this part of the podcast, no JP. <laughs> um, hot seat questions. Hey, guys, do me a favor, please, before we even start these hot seat questions, get the likes up. We had just shy of 125 people tapped in. This was a great show tonight. So why don't we get the likes up for the homie Brandon, all right, especially if you like tonight's episode. But it's hot seat questions for Brandon Nixon Reptiles coming in hot. Here we go. You ready, Brandon? Let's go for it. Frozen Thought or Live. Live for the ball pythons. God damn it. Let's just say I'll stop. All right, live. You have okay. So live. You had to pick single one word. Other. Okay, live. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Ball python eggs. Would you ever cut them or will you never cut them? Cut them. On what day? 56. Yay, chondros, boo chondros. Boo chondros. Favorite boa constrictor morph. IMG. When it comes to a baby ball python, pre first shed meal or post first shed meal? Post. If it came down to you making this law, are you going to say yay to imports or boo to imports? Yay to imports. One reptile you would love to import to your collection, any reptile anywhere around PG the world. Iguana. Wow, damn. Epic. What about one reptile that you're tired of seeing imported? Leave it alone. Don't touch it. You know, save the turtles. Thank you. Thank God. Someone's paying attention. Um, yay sports or boo sports? Boo sports. Big flexor or no flexor? Mm, no flexor. <laughs> Steak or fish? Steak. Ban Halen or Sammy Hagar? I'm terrible with music. <laughs> <laughs> this is no, th th those are the questions I was referring to. If but Van Halen. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, do you have a favorite genre of music at all? Like, do you listen to music while you clean or, or no? Podcasts usually. Oh, respect. All right. Uh, little word. Pop. Wow. Why do you have to sit? You could take that back. You just said K-pop. It's, it's, it's fun. It's something about it. It's fun. Wow. It's surprising. I know. Bro, are you a hey, me? Are you guys still really alike? <laughs> Hip hop. K-pop. Korean pop. The like the the boy oh, the I boy dancers. That. I don't yeah, know bro. About that. They're yeah. all glittered up and stuff. It's crazy. All right. No, I'm not judging you, Brandon. Do your thing. All right. Little word association. Say the first thing to come to mind. All right. Milk. Titties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got a man. Uh, cocoa. Chocolate milk. Stuck shed. <laughs> Damn. FedEx shipping. Eh, we need them. Least favorite. Ball Python double recessive. Uh, DG Clown. Favorite? Just to spite people. Damn, Oof. he's a DG Clown. Dude, Leas is going to be fucking shooting for the. He's probably going to rage tonight. God damn. Leas is going to be partying hard. All right. What about 
favorite recessive in the ball python game? I mean, sunset. I don't know why I asked that. Um, Instagram, Instagram trolls. Nah, fuck them. Last one before Emilio's. Coolest reptile podcast in the world. This one for all the variety. Thank you. Emilio. All right, buddy. One has to go. Ultra Pied, Sunset Ultramel, or Super Chocolate Clown? What? Oh, that's why you asked that question earlier. That's rude. <sighs> He's strategic. This guy's well, very... Ult, 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 I, I love the Ultramel Pieds, but they, they would have to go out of that because the Sunset Ultramel is, is so nice, and then the uh, you know Super Chocolate Clowns are just, I mean, so cool. So, you're, you, in other words, Pied is not keen to you. I have a lot of pied. I love pied, but when you're when you're putting it up against the Sunset Ultramel and you're putting it next to the Super Chocolate Clown, it's unfortunate, but sacrifices need to be made. Damn. I set them up for that. I, I, I messaged them earlier today, and I asked them the specifics. Yeah. And, and I love Ultramel pieds, man. Ultramel, like, I've got, like, several of them, and they're, they look phenomenal, but... I can't get rid of my my future of super chocolates and you know sunset ultramels to sacrifice my my current you know flame. I, I think have... there, I think there I would have answered exactly the same. Yeah, because I, I mean I have other pie stuff anyway. Just saying. Same. Yeah, <laughs> I think we all would have agreed on that one to be honest. Yeah, because ain't, ain't nobody touching my super chocolate shit. Hell nah, I love that. Um, but again, great time tonight, Brandon. Thank you so much for people to be on top of all your stuff. Uh, best way to follow is Nixon Reptiles on Instagram. Do you have YouTube as well or just Instagram? No, I have YouTube. I just am lazy and slack at doing it. So it's not easy. Working on it. Yeah, day it's by not. Day. But listen, the link to his IG is in the description below. I'll pull the one off YouTube in case this fool gets a crack at it again. But go give him a follow. Go give him some support. Shoot him a message. Let him know that he killed it tonight. But give it up for the homie Brandon, Nixon Reptiles. It's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for having me. All right, bro. Hey, have a good night. Thank you, Brandon. Appreciate you. You as well. All right, peace. Damn, what a good Great time. Episode. That Great was epic. Episode. Great episode. No offense to the previous new breeder on the blocks that we've had, but that was the best one we've had in a long time. Yes, that sir. one right there smacked. Because like I said, it was kind of like, like, like your episode. I was like, holy shit, this, this guy ain't, ain't no new breeder. Like, he's fucking laying it down. I just love shit being laid down on a, on a new breeder segment. Um, cause I know it's mainly for people who are getting their feet wet, but that's not always the case. You know what I'm saying? So great show. What's your overall assessment on tonight? Big uh, dog. You know, I was talking to some, some in the chat on the V unit. This guy's doing it right, bro. I love what he's doing. And for sure, you know, everything is to the T, you know, yep. gotta respect that. Love it. Yep. And I just love that this, I mean, based off what he just said tonight and his work is all about the animals, man. Like, this dude's in here to do his thing with the reptiles and just that's it. It's all about doing his thing and he's holding it down. And uh thought it was great. I definitely know this Brandon will for sure come back to the trap. And, Round two worthy for sure all and day. One more thing, one more thing. Sure. No misrepresentation at all. I love that shit. And what you see is what you get. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you had to add that because it's true. You know what I'm saying? Like it, somebody. Somebody should easily go to anyone's account and just see the work that you're doing, not someone else's. I'm just sorry. That's just my opinion. Should be your shit. But are you pot? Oh, I thought you were frozen. Sometimes you got you catch me freeze, like you know, I don't know. But <laughs> hey, big dog, thank you so much. I guys, you got I gotta let everyone out there know you will be seeing Emilio again this week. All right. I will be out. All right. I have my surgery. I have, I have surgery this week. I won't be here Thursday night, but Emilio. You stoked or what? You you and Dave Levison are taking over the trap. This is the first time I'm letting anyone take over the, the, the mothership. Yeah, you're going to be in the background, you know, in the controls. But, um, yeah, me and Dave are going to have Phil and Elizabeth from U.S. Arc and U.S. Arc, Florida. And we want you to join us because we want you guys to know what is always at stake if you do not join your lobby and take care of of what you love through U.S. Arc and U.S. Arc Florida membership. It's, it's be extremely important. Yep, and it's just a part of what we do. To be honest, you know everything. Yeah. Everything has, has its has its due diligence, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good time. I appreciate you and Dave stepping up for me. 
Um, and you guys make sure you hit that subscribe button, set your reminder for Thursday night. But also go follow my man, Emilio, Villarino Reptiles on IG. Go subscribe to the V Unit family. Amazing group of people out there. Um, Emilio, please thank you so much for everything you do. I enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. Um, and you guys, you'll see the homie Emilio this Thursday night. But give it up for Big E Top Cheats, a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Good night, everybody. Have a good night, bro. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this Monday night's new breeder on the block. I sure did, as I was saying earlier. This great episode, man. Shout out to Brandon, Nick, some reptiles. Um, and again, if this was your first time tapping in with us, hit that like button. Get the likes up for Brandon. He deserves all the likes he could possibly get on tonight's show. And for me, if you really enjoyed tonight's show, hit that subscribe button, okay? If you thought that you learned a lot tonight and you thought that this was a great podcast, if you hit that subscribe subscri if you hit that subscribe button, it means a lot. It helps me, motivates me. I'm all about building this channel organically. Been at it very, very hard, okay? So pause. But if you hit that subscribe button, it really means a lot to me and it just motivates me. So thank you so much. And again, you can listen to uh, Trap Talk Reptile Network on all the major audio platforms. So Buzzsprout, Apple Podcast, Spotify, and drop comments. Let me know what you uh, let me know what you think of this podcast. Let me let me know in the comment section what you thought of tonight's episode. All right. And of course, if you're looking for exclusive content, if you want to get more out of what you see out of each episode, if you want to tap into the, the behind the scenes of this podcast, then join the Trap Talk Patreon family. Very first link in the description below. Click on it. Join the Trap Talk Patreon family. Get connected to the Discord, over 200 trappers. And then you can get connected to the IG group chat that's cracking. But best way to network yourself with some of the top people in this game. And that's a fact. Ball pythons, green tree pythons, emeralds. Dude, all around the board, man. It's it's cracking in the trap family. So my Patreon members, you guys are my heart. I love you guys. And you guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Enjoy the rest of your night. I'll be here tomorrow for All in the Tree Tuesdays. We got Ryan Young. Dude, Ryan Young is the man. He holds, I want to say, the highest. Uh, Python species bred in a private sector. He has 32, I think. All right. Anyways, it's going to go down. He hates red neonates. We got to figure out why. He's all about the yellow neonates. He thinks red neonates should go to hell. Maybe not that extreme. But it's pretty aggressive why he does not like reds. So why don't you tap in? If you're a chondro breeder and you love reds and you're like, what is this guy's problem? Come hang out with us tomorrow night. Let's see. And then let's maybe gain up on Ryan Young. I'm just kidding. He's my boy. Anyways, guys, enjoy the rest of your night. It's a wrap. You're the Trap Cools Reptile Podcast in the world. Episode 459 in the books. Have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow, and I'm out.